Hey folks, it's Lyle. Before we get into the episode, I wanted to let you know that tickets are on sale now for Therapy Gecko Live in all of these cities, and you can get them at therapygeckotour.com before they sell out. The shows will involve bringing folks from the audience up on stage to talk to a gecko about whatever they want, just like we do in this podcast. These shows are completely unplanned, completely unpredictable, and they will be a lot of fun, so I hope to see you there. All right, let's get into the episode. Tim Heidecker. Hi. What's been the most persistent thought on your mind lately? What's been the most persistent thought uh, on my mind lately? Mm-hmm. Um, how? Do, I don't have that. Well, you don't have a consistent. You don't have like a recurring a, pattern of. Yeah, thoughts? I'm trying to be honest with you. I yeah, just, please. Uh, yeah, I don't. Uh, it, it's. Uh, t- it would be. What am I? Uh, what am I not doing to? Uh, what could I be doing better? What don't? Yeah. What am I doing? Uh, what aren't I doing enough? Mm-hmm. What, how can I make? Th- how can I grow what I'm doing? Mm-hmm. I guess. I guess that that is usually like the. And then there's certain projects where uh, we do the on cinema Oscar special every yeah. year, and that's about a month out from happening. A yeah. little more. A little more than a month. So most of my nights before I go to bed are thinking about that, stressing about that, because mm-hmm. it's incredibly. Uh, uh, complicated, yeah. difficult thing to pull off. It's yeah. a three-hour live movie, basically, mm-hmm. or show uh, with a lot of moving parts. And so I worry about it. I think about it. I make, you know, uh, last, you know, I I find lately for some reason I'll have nothing all day. Yeah. I don't know if you ever have this. I'll have nothing, no breakthroughs all day. And then right as I'm about to go to sleep. So now everything just rushes it in. It comes in. And some of it is... Some of it's positive. Some of it is ideas that yeah. I can use. So I, but I want to go to sleep too. So I have to, yeah. I have to make the decision. Should I? Is that good enough that I'm going to remember it, yeah. or can I? Uh, should I get up and make a couple of quick notes? But at this point, when you've done so many projects and you're you've gone through those stressful times mm-hmm. so many times, does it? Does it get easier or no? Never? It only gets harder. How does it get harder? Be, well, you, there's some things about it that get easier because you learn, yeah, uh, about what works and what doesn't work, and you develop patterns and relationships that you can trust. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you, 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 some, you know, you burn through the what I think is maybe a limited uh, reservoir of creativity. Sure. That and and. And the world changes. You've done a lot of things, so there are things that you now can't do because you've mm-hmm. done them already. Mm-hmm. So your struggle is uh, how to maintain something that started very small, that might have started very uh, organically, or yeah. very inspirationally from nothing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you got to, uh, this is now, uh, you know, your life. So yeah. you want it to continue and be great and get better or... Or, or stop doing it is an option too. What, what do is something else? But yeah, we're not. I'm not at that place. I'm just. Uh, so I don't think. I think it's hard to say it gets easier. What's compelling you to still do stuff? Is it? Do you like? Was there at one point where it was because you had something to prove, or is it? Is it always just been just because you like it? Well, it's generally a lot of fun, and it's generally a lot of. Uh, it's a good use of uh, time. Yeah. And the people I, it's always, a, it's ev- almost everything I do is fairly collaborative. Yeah. So there's always a partner involved. There's other people involved yeah. that I enjoy being with, enjoy. Um, and, and, you know, I don't have hobbies. I don't, coll- you know, I don't, I don't do things that, I don't know how else I'd spend my time. W- would you consider music a, a hobby? No, I don't consider it a hobby. Uh, it's another outlet for my creativity i okay. guess okay what, what would you consider a, you don't have any hobbies uh no i generally lie inert in okay. my bed uh and then work if, and then you know i've i have two young kids yeah um so i spend a lot of time with them obviously I play yeah. games and take them to various things and do activities with them so uh, that consumes a lot of my time, and then I'll like watch TV at night or watch a movie or something. If you died tomorrow, uh, would you be would you be like, uh, <laughs> we did it, or would you be like, nah, we had more things we didn't get to? Oh, completely unsatisfied. Completely unsatisfied. Completely unsatisfied. Yeah. 
uh, no, I, I mean, I'm, there's cert- certainly a tremendous amount of things that I've done and made and that I'm very proud of. So I, I, I take that back. I would be, uh, there are certain things I'm very proud of, but I always think that I, um, you know, I think everybody thinks they should, uh, be appreciated more than than they are do you feel like by more appre- people yeah do you not do you not feel isn't that crazy it's, you could it, be appreciated it, by so many people and still not feel uh well you know they're not uh, they're not honoring me at the mark twain prize okay uh there i haven't gotten any i've never won an award you that's, <laughs> <laughs> what what award would you most want to win uh, Oscar would be great. Okay. Oscar for best uh, actor. Uh, but okay. I. But uh, no. I, Somebody email the Oscars. Uh, listen, I'm very. I'm very happy. Uh, I'm not. I'm, I'm trying not to complain, but you're asking me very pointed questions mm-hmm. that I appreciate. Do you think I'm uh, trying to get you to complain? No, but you're. Uh, I'm trying to be honest too, yeah. and I don't want to just. I don't want to. You know, act like the celebrity on a, on the Jimmy Fallon show and tell mm-hmm. you how how great everything is because mm-hmm. it's. That's not. Uh, I, I want to be as open and, uh, and forthright with you as I possibly can. I appreciate that. We're we're starting. Are we are we live? I'm <laughs> just ninety percent sure we're live. But um, it, it, I I do tend to. I did this live stream for on cinema the other yeah. night. Uh, a uh, Q and A thing, and they're like, "Is it still fun?" And I sort of wrestled with this idea of fun mm-hmm. and what fun is, because I don't really. Um, and the truth is, yes, it is fun, but it's also, it's not just fun. It's, it, there's work and there's yeah. pain involved and there's mm-hmm. uh, struggle. So, um, yeah, I think it's, 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 it should be, uh, I hope it's helpful to know yeah. that like, even if there's a perception that, that, you know, everything is light and easy and fun it, yeah. for, for everybody, there's, there can be a, ch- a, a, you know, challenge there. Do you have things outside of work that give you pain? Uh, my back hurts. Right, uh, you were telling me about that. Uh, I have a very specific back, upper back thing going on yeah. where it's uh, it only affects me when I on dry when I drive, mm-hmm. and uh, so I you know I do this a lot. God damn it! Doesn't really help. Like I that I kind of made my back start to hurt. A little by, bit by, by doing that. Yeah, by doing that, <laughs> we have different backs. Well, I've hurt my back badly in a couple of different ways that are so stupid and embarrassing. Like by picking up, uh, you know, picking up a piece of luggage. Like yeah. right as I'd, go, I'd gone on this big trip, I was everywhere and doing all sorts of physical things. Mm-hmm. And then at the last step, at the last uh, step up the, up to my house, I went like this with my suitcase, and it just <laughs> it went. It's and kind of scary to think that you can develop. You there's so much um, bad things that can happen to you just by going th- normally through your day. You don't yeah, even have to be like your shoes. Yeah, you know. And I'm I feel this past few years feel like you know I'm, I'm turning 47 on Friday. Happy birthday! Yeah, yeah. Thank you. And I, I'm 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 you know I'm starting to like uh, contend with mortality and okay. my body kind of you know sh- shutting down on me eventually. Okay. And you know, I, I, it's, these are new. Th- you're a young boy, so you're not you're not going to face these anytime soon. These these fears and these thoughts. I'm trying to keep them in mind. Like I know that I'm not going to live forever, and that it's I should a start stunning. To keep, it's a stunning yeah. thing to start to contemplate as yeah. you get older. Like there's it's the inevitability of it. Are you and, afraid at all? Uh, yeah, I've made a whole album called Fear of Death. Okay, I think it's it's a terrifying proposition to me. To be dead? <laughs> yeah, to be dead. But it's like... No, you know what? Not to be dead, but yeah. to die. That moment that is coming. It's coming. And it, it could be slow and mm-hmm. painful. Mm-hmm. It could be quick. It could be mm-hmm. pushed out of a... Mm-hmm. Like it p- pushed in front of a dump truck. Mm-hmm. That might be better. But that moment is in the future. For yeah. you and me and everybody watching, I read something Isn't that, that, wild? that resonated with me a lot. It was it said something like uh, some philosophy to gladly pay the taxes of life, mm. and so to die a slow, painful death is a tax on the joy that you ha- that you got to live at right. all. You know. Well, that's that's a nice way of thinking of it. Uh, I feel guilt for my uh, that my children will have to deal with that it's situation 
my wife if if I uh, outlive her, which mm-hmm. I hope I which I hope, hope she you, does. Do no. You hope you die first or she dies first? I hope she dies as soon as possible. Good. No, I'm just kidding. Um, no. Yeah. So, uh, but the being dead, I don't care about that because it'll like. There's a great line about you. There's a great line. Uh, I think Roger Ebert said. Yeah. Which is, uh, I have no memory, I had no issues uh, be, before I was born. And now he's dead. Yeah, and I'm assuming it's a very similar situation. Very similar situation. Well, do you not? Be- <laughs> are you religious at all? Do you no. not? Do you don't I believe was born. In- uh, I always say, uh, I was born and raised Catholic, so of course I'm an agnostic. Okay. Do you? Would you? If you could, uh, somehow drink a potion or trick mm-hmm. yourself something into like that gives you the belief, would you do that, or do you like your where you're at? And your belief I just don't think it's I just don't think it's I think it's irrelevant to be, uh, I don't see uh, I don't see what good it'll do you mm-hmm. unless you truly believe that there's this uh, eternal damnation mm-hmm. uh, awaiting you if you don't behave by certain rules yeah. that seem arbitrary a lot of the time um, so I guess I'll take my chances at that not being true if it doesn't were- seem likely. It doesn't seem very like, but a lot mo- more people than not believe it. I don't there's know if that's true. There's more. I, there's got. There's more people that believe in God just globally than not. Right? Oh, I don't know. But I, I don't know could be, That I'm could be true. But up. they might not have given it a lot of thought. Uh huh. <laughs> but there's something. To, I'm like, there's something to that. There's I something. I could sit down. Probably. Yeah. Uh, I would say if you brought in a hundred people one by one. Give me ten minutes with each of them. You could I convince, convince them that, them that there's, there's no there's afterlife. No, there's th- they, the odds are not great. How would you? Do uh, that? That's why I don't call myself an atheist. That's yeah. obnoxious. You know, uh, I be- I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't matter to me. Would they I leave? Can't be, I can't be thinking about that stuff. Do you think they would leave that room with after you tell them that there is no afterlife and you could? Would they leave that room sadder? Or happier. I think they should walk away with a, a, a serenity that, mm-hmm. uh, that, 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 that this is one thing I could take out of my life thinking about. Okay. How's being a father? Is that tough? Oh, it's great. Yeah, no, I, uh, I, the older they get, the, the first few years are, are, tr- are, are a lot of work. Yeah. And there's not a lot of return, you know. The, I mean, the babies are cute, mm-hmm. and there's a lot of... Some babies are. My kids were very cute. They were. And they were very good, but uh, they don't. You know, you can't hang out with them. <laughs> you can. You can kind of hang no. out with a baby. I mean, you, you, if you're when you're hanging out with the grown man, you sometimes it's just you guys sitting together watching TV, and you can do that with a baby. That's true, but they don't give much back. They don't give. They give nothing right. back. Um, you ever talk to someone who's not a great conversationalist? It's kind of similar. Uh, yeah, I, I. There's a lot of people I could uh, name right now, but. Um, no, I. Uh, but now they're like seven and nine, and okay. they are, sorry, six and nine, and you know you can start you can start talking to they them have about stuff. And they have, yeah, opinions. they have opinions. My daughter, who's the older one, she's it's like hanging out with a like a, a friend of mine a lot of the time. Mm. So I, I love them quite a bit, and you know I, my, I reached there's a point at the night in the night it's around eight eight thirty when yeah. it's bedtime when my wife and I are like goodbye. You know, like good night. And like, they're off in their own yeah, universe. We, we do not. I do not. I can't hang anymore. What do they do? Are they? Is it books? Is it? Do they have an iPad? What are they doing when they're not with you? Either you. They guys? have. They're on the iPad. They play Roblox. Okay. Um, which was a great thing during the pandemic because they were able to socialize with their friends, and um, and they watch movies and TV and read a lot. They read a lot of books. She, my daughter's a voracious reader. She reads at the breakfast table in the morning, and mm-hmm. so uh, they seem pretty well rounded. Are you, you optimi- Like, are you optimistic about the future, or are you? Where, uh, do, you, where do you range on the, the optimism pessimism spectrum? Uh, doesn't look great. Doesn't look great. Doesn't look great for now. I mean, I don't know. You can look. I'm listening to uh, the great uh, Dan Carlin. Uh, history podcast, the the uh, hardcore history, it's called. Terrific. Okay. Thought about that. Very long form. It sounds like a porn. <laughs> hardcore history. Uh, well, he's talking. I'm listening to this one about the fall of the Roman Empire and the rise of the um, the the Vikings and the the 
the barbarians, you yes. know. And you know, every civilizations collapse and and people persist. Yeah. Uh, so it it do, I do you do look around and you go like this is you know like LAX today yes. here in LA power went out. I didn't know that. The whole airport mm-hmm. l- lights went out, electricity went out for like an hour. It's not a good sign of a thriving civilization, you know. I mean, it's a minor what? thing, but there's a million little ticks in that. But in uh, during the time when the power is out in LAX, there's still way more places in the world where the power is on. Absolutely, pretty good. Yes, I, well, it's it, pretty good. You know, that's interesting. You bring that up because I'm driving over here, and it was a long drive. Yes, and it was traffic. Thanks and you look at the, the traffic. Drive. And sometimes at you know four o'clock you look at the traffic and you think, this isn't working. You know this is broken. Mm-hmm. Everything's broken. Uh, but then you have another. I had another thought, which was like, what's well, kind of amazing? There's all these people on the road, and no one's driving into each other. You yeah. know, like, no yeah, they very perfect. I mean, like it's all. It does kind of work. So yeah, you know, you could look at the news. You could say, well, I mean, California yeah. in, the, in the West seems to be running out of water. Yeah, sure. But they've been saying that for a long time. They have. So, you know, um, I don't know. I expect bad things. I always expect bad things to happen. But you always expect always, bad things you, to you happen. You have to be. You have to be ready. Do you believe I that? was in New York on 9-11. You didn't think I knew that was coming? <laughs> <laughs> Do you, all, you always expect bad? But just, I, no, the fact I, I, I think it's mo- just the reality. If you look at history, there, that, 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 you know... The, the, through history, there's just there's there's been a. But we're doing. You were talking about the barbarians and the. We're doing yeah. way better than those. Guys. Abs- you take a shit and it goes to a magical place that you don't even know they, where it is. They had plumbing back then. Ours is probably better though. Yeah, absolutely. There are there are, there. Are, of course, I don't want to go back to the. I'm not. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not saying I want to go back to live during the time of the uh, the Dark Ages, mm-hmm. which is not a appropriate uh, term, by the way. I learned you don't call it you the don't dark call it the Dark Ages. ages? No. Why did? No. Why is that not well? Because it discounts a lot of positivity, positive things that were happening during <laughs> that time. Okay, I guess. Yeah. Okay. There, I guess it, it wasn't was all ages. bad. That's just like now. Yeah. So I'm not sure what the question is. Do, do I am I positive about the? Future? Are you positive about the future? It sounds. What you said that you always look at waiting for bad things to happen. It sounds like you're not. No, but I, I don't. It doesn't consume me. You know, I don't. Okay. I don't. Uh, I still. You know live my life and hope for the best and uh try to do things and try to you know and have fun but i'm just being honest you can't look at you can't just have a uh, rosy uh rose colored glasses perspective on the world is this so this why would you this philosophy you want a fool philosophy are you like do you want your kids to be like as cautious oh, as you, you are know, they should be pro- pragmatic and okay. skeptical of okay. of the world around them and I, my dad taught yeah. me that a little healthy dose of of skepticism, kind of like a expect the worst, hope for the best. Absolutely, vibe. that's a great way to to live. Okay, I think. Hey, do you want to take a phone call? We have to. That's why I came in. I should also say before I know this gift. is a I know this is a the therapy uh, therapy. Therapy show. Therapy show. Yes. Um, I am a Scientologist. Okay. And we don't believe in um, in psychology, and psychiatry. Mm-hmm, we mm-hmm. find that it's not uh, helpful. People are uh, calling in evil. specifically desiring advice from you through a Scientology lens. So yeah, that works out very well. This is a pretty good. Uh, you know, this is where sometimes ideas come from, mm-hmm. uh, and the audience now can be the witness to a, a new one, which is I'm going to self-identify as a Scientologist. Do you want to take one <laughs> that is serious? Yeah. Or uh, whatever. I don't. Uh, don't ask me. Just bring him. Bring him our way. I'll take it all. Hello. Hello. Adrian. Hi, uh, hi Adrian. You're hi, on the phone hi. with uh, Lyle and Tim. We're geckos. Adrian. What's going on, baby? How can we get you today? I. I'm just gonna say that I love you so much, Mister Geck. Tim, I've heard that you're a comedian and I'm uh, very cool. Uh, I love comedy, but uh, I just wanted to talk about family stuff, I guess. What kind of family stuff do you call in to talk about, Adrian? I I don't feel, uh, I might be wrong, but I, I 
don't feel like my family loves me as a son. They just love me when they need stuff from me. I, I constantly feel like I'm a slave, that they don't appreciate the things I do for them. And whenever I try to bring it up to them, that uh, they make me feel a certain way, mm -hmm. that uh, they just treat me like I'm a disrespectful guy. I don't want to say kid because I'm like 20, but. Can I, do you have a good circle of friends? I do. I have a decent circle of friends. I'm trying to go through college with some of them. I have an amazing girlfriend that helps me through this. Guess what? But I, That's your family. That's your family. That's my family. Yeah. I mean, you, if you want to bring, if you, if you have something well, else I, to say, but I, I find this a lot, a lot that you can only expect so much of your blood relatives. Mm. Um, sometimes it's going to be, it has to be natural. You have to be, it has to be, um, it's not always going to work. Yeah. And just because they're your family doesn't mean that it has to work. It'd be nice if it does, it makes things easier, but sometimes it's just not healthy to have that close of a relationship with your family just because they're your family. And if you can find that love and find that support amongst friends and you know other people in your life, you know, don't obsess over getting it from your immediate family because it may never happen. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. that's my two cents please continue well yeah i mean it's it's tough right because there's the, i've talked to people about this stuff on here before it's very tough when there's an issue like this that's so like you know sad a person struggling with like stuff going on with their family but there's only you if you can't force somebody to give you something in a relationship to love you or to act a certain way to you can like express that you're feeling you can do. unloved. And then the, and at the end of the day, that's all you can do. And that sucks. But it is a great, beautiful thing to hear that you have uh, friends that you can kind of like lean more into those those relationships to find the the love that you feel like you're not finding from your family. How, what do you feel about all of this, Adrian? I think there's all very good points. I think, honestly, like the only issue is that I, I still live with my parents because uh, college ain't cheap, man. Um, and I would, I mean, I'm not looking for a, like a way to tell them that I'm leaving, but moving out, but I just, uh, I completely understand. There's still that. a, dep there's yeah. still an actual dependency there. Right. 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 What's yeah, your, what's, uh, do you work at all outside of school? Yeah. I work at Taco Bell. <laughs> okay. Well, how much does it, how much does this uh, fracture, or how much does this, uh, like, what's an example of how this is affecting you in practical terms? I just, like, my, my parents, mainly my dad, he's kind of cold, like, with his emotions, but mm -hmm. he only treats me nice whenever he wants something from me. And then he'll guilt trip me about it, and I'm like, well, I mean, you you do all, I do all this for you, and and like you make all these faces whenever I ask you to do something, but I mean, I never ask anything of them. Mm -hmm. I like it's, it's a little weird. Like that's a rough they, that's they, a rough they, thing. Like a parent looking at their child is like like have, like you need to pay a debt. You have a debt you need right. to pay to me just for the fact that I raised right. you. Yeah. But, yeah, it's like that. Like, like, I, I'm not saying that I want anything from when I do stuff from, for them, but like they say that, like, oh, I, we, I, you do this out of like the kindness of your heart, and we still give you stuff, but they pay for my gas, but I never get to see that gas because it's it's being used to run errands for them, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, or, you know, I, I'll, say, I'll also say this. Like, I think being a teenager in early 20s it's a tough period of time it's a transitionary period of time transitional period of time and you will probably grow out of this situation soon as you get out of school and make a life for yourself and 
you know, your relationship with your family might change because of that. This is a, it's in a real tr- tricky spot right now, but maybe you just kind of got to keep your head down and and see and try not to, you know, let it get to you and know that it's about them, not you. Mm. Uh, of course. And only you know, you can be honest with them, but don't let it uh, br- don't let it like you know obsess. Don't become obsessive about it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, right. in the meantime, plan lots of play dates with the friends. You know, this is a good point. Yeah. I feel like um, spending some time with your friends is always a good idea. I love my idea. friends, and some of them I treat, I consider family. You know, mm-hmm. we we consider each other's family because mm-hmm. I don't know oh, extended family. I don't, I'm not very close with them, you know? Like, if not you're... because there's any acrimony there. It's just we don't really get along. Um, Adrian, is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Uh... I love the geck. I'm going to start Thanks, watching man. more things for you, Tim. And you thank should. you for listening. He's a y'all have a Y'all have a great, great night. Hey, take care. Thank Adrian. you, Adrian. All the best to you. Who's your best friend? I don't think about it in those terms. Mm-hmm. I think there's a lot. There's different friends for different uh, situations in my life. Obviously, Eric and I are very close. We've known mm-hmm. each other for 20 years. Greg Turkington, who I work mm-hmm. with a lot. Um, my uh, producer on Office Hours, Matt, very close with Vic, Eric, Doug. and your first cousin are hanging off of a cliff. Mm. And you can only save one. Who are we going with? Um, well, Eric. I mean, it just okay. makes business sense. Sure, you know, right? The cousin's not really bringing in any cash. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Oh my God, Lyle. I'm May. I'm here with Tim. We're being geckos. How you doing? Oh my god, I'm doing so good. How are you? Good. I, just, I didn't want to answer for you. Well, she was talking to you. She's, I think she's talking to both of us. No. I mean, May. Both be uh, okay. May, how can we get you today? What's going on? Oh my gosh. I just have to start first by saying, Lyle, I have listened to you since the COVID lockdown. And this oh, is my beautiful. first time I've ever talking to you. And oh my god! Love you. Love you too, man. But, oh, but anyways. Can you say something Tim, nice so, about Tim too? Because the other caller didn't say anything nice about Tim. And it's making you me know feel what, Tim, I think you are so freaking cool for being here. Like, the fact that you're cool enough to be associated with Lyle means that you're like an A-list <laughs> celebrity for me. Great. <laughs> How can we help oh you today, God. babe? Dude, so... I'm, so I'm living in Salt Lake City right now. I'm from Seattle and I'm about to graduate college and I've had literally so much fun with it, but I'm a little nervous about making money off the bat, you know? Mm. And so I've been thinking about moving to Colorado and opening up, like I want to get a space that is like a half dispensary, half gym because the dispo isn't like part of my major, but the gym is part of my major. So I'd still be using my education, you know, but also like guaranteed I'd be making some money. You want to open a half dispensary, half gym. Everyone's body is different and responds differently to, to things. But I, when I get stoned, exercise is the last thing I yeah I think of. I generally f- fall asleep mm-hmm. but there might be oh. something there i think if you do it in a very curated <laughs> uh what do you what would, what would be the word the artisan kind of uh yes. you know like f- not a lot of equipment it's like very or it's very kind of yoga e mm-hmm. some some exactly. maybe some bar That's exactly what's what the, i'm thinking like bar what's that called bar with the, the with the bar where it's like dance yeah it's like ballet. Yeah, it's What's called, it called bar. You got it. I've yeah, there's baby. bar. There's Zumba. There's Pilates. Like, well, Zumba is a little outdated. What? What? Yeah. I've no, what is? What, what do you do? <laughs> right, Zumba's Zumba. like very '90s. Maybe Zumba's coming back though. Zumba's '90s. Uh, I, I feel like a Zumba. Uh, you could do a, a weed zany Zumba. We smoke weed, we get a little zany, yeah. we go a little crazy, do a little Zumba. I like that. I like getting right. a little high we and play then some Wiz and Khalifa, dan- some Snoop Dogg. No. <laughs> or you could play some like a uh, Fish or Grateful Dead or something. By the way, 
Oh you know, in, with the financial thing, I don't know the numbers on this, but would starting a business be significantly more expensive than college? You know, probably that or it would equal out because I'm about to leave college with 50K in debt. And so to even have like, I feel like an idea or get legality of business going, it'd be around 50K. So. Oh, yeah. It sounds like you got some startup costs there. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Where do you begin? You've got to like find a partner and stuff. You got to get somebody that's been that's in the game, right? Yeah, dude, I got to find a realtor, somebody who can find me a space. Because first, I'll definitely open up the gym because I can just get that going and then hopefully attach on this dispo later. But, yeah. dude. It's, take out all yeah, the uh, cliff bars and put in tins of gummies. <laughs> Medicated uh, weed cliff bars. Yeah. Oh, my God, that would be awesome. Cliff, hear um, me out right now. <laughs> May, are you high right now? You know, I'm not joking. The reason it took me a second to uh, pick up the phone was because I had you on mute, and I might have exhaled out of my water pipe. Ah, okay. In this moment, do you feel like exercising? You know, I feel like a million dollars because I'm talking to you. But okay. honestly, when I get down, I love to work out. I love it. It feels so good. I can connect with try the it. movement and the muscles. It's awesome. Yeah, because I'm. You're inspiring me to try working out stoned because uh, I've never tried it, and I don't enjoy working out. I find it tedious mm -hmm. and and like I'm, it's always a. It's like uh, I just got to do it, and I got to yeah. get through it. Yeah, and it's boring. Yeah, but if I was a little high, it might yeah. be fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dude, you just like um, you don't even like counting and stuff is so much easier and you don't even like realize I feel like counting, counting would be fine. harder I feel like fine. one four eight well exactly that's the fun of it because eventually you get to eight and you're like yeah I did it yay <laughs> I don't know how I got here but I did it <laughs> I'm sold on this that's idea my, ne my next workout is is on Friday morning and I, uh, I will attempt this and let you know May anything else you want to say to the I'm people so at the computer glad. before we go um, I just want to say, everybody drop some love for Lyle, Effortive, and everybody have a great night. Thank you, May. Have a good one. You too. Bye. Do you get high often? No, but I do take a, I take a gummy at night okay. that's, that puts me to bed. Take it, puts take me it every night? <laughs> yeah. Take a weed gummy like, a fi like a five milligram or okay. whatever, like very okay. light, and uh, it just it keeps me keeps me down i gotta be put down like a horse every night <laughs> <laughs> it's all my ideas you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but uh um, right right and then the the the, the flushing of, of creative ideas yeah. and you're suppressing them with the weed gummy yeah but i don't uh generally i don't i don't sm i don't get i don't uh use weed uh socially very often mm -hmm. every once in a while but mm -hmm. very very rarely i just started kind of getting uh very 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 um in small doses, very a couple times a year into mushrooms, though, and I oh. really do like that. Like little, like okay. I did this over the summer. I just took a tiny bit. What's a tiny bit? Like some, like a micro, like dose? a half a stem or something. A half a stem. Okay. Like a, even, not even like a. What, little, what, did, what did it do for you? It, it, it's just beautiful, wonderful few hours. Okay. Just happy, a little, little loopy, a uh, little, you know. And is that was that your first time on? Doing no, I, I did it. Uh, I've done it. Over off and on for years. I did it in cut in high school a lot, psychedelics a lot. Okay, uh, not a lot, but you know, it was like a summer of doing acid and stuff. And, and uh, did you? And do you and remember? I and I, then I had a bad experience, and I mm. wasn't. I stayed away for a year, twenty years or so. Can I ask what the bad experience was? Yeah. Uh, well, I've now analyzed it and I've determined that it really probably wasn't the acid. Mm. It was probably I was at the Lollapalooza, nineteen ninety four. And you had the Smashing Pumpkins there, and you had the Beastie Boys. And the Beastie Boys came out, and we were way in the back and had been tripping all day. And uh, the, the, the energy shifted, as you can imagine, yes. when the Beastie Boys came out. Yes. This is like ill communication era. Does that mean anything to you? Um, Check your head, ill communication. I'll, I'll look it up later. They were, I mean, they were headlining the, 
the Love Pulers. Okay. This is this is hot. I know that I know that the what was shit, what was the other band you said it was Beastie Boys and Who? Smashing Pumpkins. Okay. Yeah. No, they I mean they have similar like hardcore. Yeah, but energies. it's a yeah. little prettier, a little dreamier. Sure. Psychedelic. So it kind of worked, but um anyway, I took a hit from a joint from a stranger. And I had a full disasso- disassociative you know, uh, panic attack Yeah, that um, stayed with me for hours. It, it, it was, even the next day, it was kind of tingling in me. And, and I, I just assumed it was this reaction. To, it was the acid. But there's a good chance uh, this, the dude gave me, you know, something, something, something totally bad, different. Some angel dust or I don't know what, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. PCP. I mean, who knows? So uh, it's still very, you know, I don't encourage, it's, it's, a, it's a dangerous sport, any yeah. drugs. I don't encourage anybody. If you do it, do it with, sup- you know, with somebody, <laughs> I don't know, do it with supervision. No. But, but I find that a tiny little bit of mushrooms can be, can be something you can control. And there are no side effects that I've found. I don't mm-hmm. feel bad the next day. I didn't, you know, and, I, and it doesn't last a long time. They're very nice. I think there's going to be more. You know, it's going to become a little more mainstream. Research, yeah, yeah, yeah. More mainstream. When you were in high school, do you can you and you were kind of doing more acid and stuff? Can you recall any epiphanies? No, but I can had? recall the uh, the brand of acid were little Beavis and Butthead tabs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that sounds safe. Yeah, no. I mean, the, the that kind of what I was getting in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. The drugs I was getting in Allentown Pen- must have been the worst stuff. You know, it just mm-hmm. must have been the the not the primo good stuff but epiphanies yeah i, do, I mean what you learn about life any. sure i think uh, a lot of my uh, as i was talking earlier about my uh, skepticism of of a higher power that was i think some of that skip- little, little creeping in with the yeah, acid a little bit yeah, i think so i think so let's see what's going on in the queue hello hello Ryan, it says here that you want to talk about the time that you put your energy into a coin and sent it through space. Okay, so I got that's I did that maybe two three days ago. I wanted to I put a coin in a box, put my energy into Who's it, this? and I was trying to send it through space time. And um, I did it a couple days ago, and I wanted to. I haven't moved the box yet, so I wanted to pick it up uh, live on the phone with you guys. But I, now, this wanted, guy took I, wanted, I, I just started watching. Uh, sorry, what was that? <laughs> Nothing. Go ahead, please. I'm a huge fan of you, Tim. I'm I'm a huge fan. I'm so excited. Oh, finally, <laughs> Jeez, it, took, <laughs> it took two. It took three calls. We got one. We railed one. No, thank you. Of course, it's the guy that put a coin in a box and is sending it through time and space. <laughs> Obviously, yeah. I mean, what other sort of person would be up that late watching watching your shows, man? They, you you really you you're one of the best, you know, producer, writer, actors of all time. Uh, you know. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> He's laughing. Um, though. He's I listen. Like... To... <laughs> He's just fucking. No, no, I, I'm so excited. I've, I, you know, I want to just take a moment to appreciate. The fact that I can call a gecko and and talk to one of the best writers, oh, thank best you, man. Comedians and I I love that time. because I appreciate it and I love doing it. I I love that there's this big old world out there that we can through technology we can all kind of get into the same room together. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I wish we could do it more often because uh, I think it's a very healthy thing. I agree. I feel like we're all kind of in the room together. Yeah. Now you sent a coin through space. So, um, I wanted to, I didn't just want to send a coin through space time. I wanted the universe to, I I wanted to help somebody. So I, 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 the energy that I put into the coin was to attempt to it, try to get the coin to appear to whoever might need it at the time and appear of the currency of the time as well. And just be a coin endlessly traveling through space and time for whoever might need it. <laughs> okay. Did it work? So I'll pick up the box right now. Uh, 
I did it three days ago. It did not. It did not. <laughs> what, what does it working look like? Yeah, how do you know that it worked before? I never have tried anything remotely close to this until maybe three days ago. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I here's what like I have a, or I even a thought about that. this. <laughs> so you're sending a coin into space to travel through time so that the coin can help whoever needs it, whether the coin finds itself in the future or in the past. Is that accurate? Yes. Okay, so how are you sure... If you're sending a coin, how are you sure that the coin will um i mean you could probably go look at historical data and see what kind of currency they were took in the 1600s but if in the future you don't know what they're going to be bartering it's with true it was so when i say i put energy into it you know you to do something like that you would need the right words and the right you know thought process so like you know what i wanted to happen was in, if it was the future or the past, the coin would morph Transfer. into whatever currency of the of the time period to whoever might be in that's need fair. of it. It was for somebody in need. <laughs> that that's fair, and it's it's uh, generous. It's um, generous. What did it look like when it worked? What was that experience? Walk us through. Just tell us what what happened when it when you said it, you claimed that it worked. So. Um, it, no, I, no, it's never worked. I've never tried oh, anything okay. recently. I thought you said that. You yeah, did I, I also thought no, I remember no. hearing you say it worked. <laughs> yeah. I, what, I, what about. Apologize for the misunderstanding. Okay. You, you retract that. That's fair. That's an honest. Uh, what were you about to ask? Well, me? uh, why would you think it would work? So, okay. Um, yeah. Uh, I believe that everybody is God. Everything in the universe as well, not just people. So, we, all things have the ability to travel through space time. <laughs> okay. I remember how you said I, you I wanted to bring that more. people into a room to convince <laughs> well, them yeah. that God doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah, what know. would you tell him? Well, what would I tell him? Yeah. I mean, how old are you? 27. Okay. And uh, are you on uh, medication? How do you define nothing? Um, like not, no, for, I smoke marijuana. <laughs> no psychoactive medication. Oh, I take hallucinogens. Uh, yeah, okay. But no, like, prescribed <laughs> pharmaceutical. Uh, no, not like mental. that, no. <laughs> yeah. Is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Um, yeah, I well, took I, well, some notes. I'm well, let me just let me say, uh, okay. I think you could take. I can I say one thing, Ryan? Mm -hmm. I think you could take your uh, experiments here as perhaps uh, maybe you can gather some information from that that perhaps you might have a a, f a, f a false theory on this concept maybe you've proved that the you've done the good work of proving that this might not be the case try it with a dollar <laughs> okay all right i i will uh all right ryan thank you for calling um, yeah uh thanks for having me you had, you had and thanks for the kind words ryan yeah it was amazing talking with you <laughs> Hey, it was Mr. Tech too, Ryan. All the best. Thank you. Likewise. <laughs> nice. I like him. I like him too. I mean, let, let, let him think outside the box. Who cares? Yeah. I am um, not sending guns around or anything like that. I don't think he's sending guns around. <laughs> no, yeah. If he was like, anything. I put a gun that I'm trying to yeah, send through space and time to. There. I feel like a coin in any era is not going to help a lot. I'm being a dick. <laughs> That's true, though. That's true. This is one one coin isn't mm -hmm. solving a, anybody's uh, major life. Somebody's problem. trying to get enough, like saved up for a stick of gum. Yeah, and it could find them and help them, which is a, it's that's yeah. Any anything helps. Sure. Maybe he could uh, scale it up if it worked, mm -hmm. and then start sending big like a big sack of uh, wheat to somebody in need or something. <laughs> <laughs> is um is is money important to you? Uh, 
Sure. Yes, I, I think it's it's uh, maintains a maintain a standard of living. Uh, uh, I have children, of course. Yeah. And I don't live extravagantly. I don't. We we're, we're pretty uh, humble about most things. I don't have I don't have a boat. Is there a, any like? <laughs> Couldn't imagine having a boat. Is there anything? That but, you are like, I want a good one of this thing. Like anything that you are like, I want, if I'm, I'm going to spend mm-hmm. good money on this thing. Cause it's, cause I feel like everyone has a thing like that. Yeah. I mean, I don't cheap. I don't, uh, I, I like good. I like well-made clothes. Okay. Sometimes that fit well, sure. you know, and that, you know, I don't disparage anybody for wearing cheaply made cheap clothes. Uh, but like yeah like this like this from amazon but um you know i don't dress i don't dress fancy or anything but i might you know scale up a little bit for for a nice cashmere sweater or something i liked the coat you came in the puffy coat yeah the patagonia coat like so i I don't mind spend a little money on on wardrobe because i i don't wear i also only wear like four things yeah you know what i mean so like like i spend a lot of money well, I spend more money than maybe your average Joe on like mm-hmm. a black or a white T-shirt because it's the only thing I wear, and I and I want it yeah. to feel comfortable and last a long time. So I see value in in spending a little money more on, you know what I mean? How how often do you do laundry? Well, I should say I I have lots of I've you know I've like let's say fifteen shirts. Okay, you have fifteen shirts, and we do laundry once a week. So okay. I'm not, I'm not. I shouldn't say. I'd Wait, say, you have fifteen shirts, and you do laundry once. A week, so you will always have. I, I always have more than I need. Okay, clothing. that's smart. Yeah, I'll <laughs> run out. I always wait until I run out. I actually, I wait until a week after I run out. No, I've always wear clean clothes. What I mean is, I have the same kind of general. I'm like you know Einstein or something, where you just have the same. Outfit, yeah, like yeah, jeans or so. Mark Zuckerberg does, yeah. I, I, I sort of, I don't go crazy with that, okay. but I have a general like day to day, what you know, t shirt, pants, socks, underwear routine. I like the idea of sending stuff through space to help other people, but like a like a shirt could be good, yeah. But a, shoes, I, people always need shoes. People always need shoes. Socks. So I think in the future. Well, we don't know what they're going to need in the future. So sending the, I would recommend I for him. I think you should send stuff into the past because we kind of know what they needed right. then. Study the past, but in the future, you have no idea. Yeah, uh, I uh, I don't want to think about that anymore. Let's take a call. <laughs> Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How about you? Tim, how are you? Good. Um, Aiden. Yeah. What's going on? Um, I got a, I got a lot going on. I thought maybe I'd call in and uh, don't take this the wrong way. But you guys are a lot older than me, and uh, I think it's best to ask you guys. You got a lot more experience on the planet than me about what you think about the shit I got going on. I mean, I already see guys. Thank you for but... respecting your elders. Exactly. Well, just, yeah, just a I mean, of... I don't want to just call you guys old. How old are you, Aiden? I'm only 19. Okay. From the way you're talking, I thought you would be like 17. <laughs> mm. No. Aiden, what's going on? Tell us everything. Tell us nothing. Get us, get us. Um... Into- Well, one of my main things is uh, I can't really commit to one person. Uh, one girl I liked a lot in high school for five years, me and her were on and off. And now, I don't know, I've just, I seek out a lot of affection from other women. That's what she said. Uh, and I guess I just continue to do so. Part of it, maybe because my dad really isn't around all the time. He was always in and out of jail. So kind of kind of rough i mean being a man in my eyes is it, kind of hard still trying to figure that out which is like i said why i like to talk to people who are a lot older than me because i mean I, the way i see it is some people go to jail 40 to life and like i can't even comprehend that you know, i've been on the planet for 20 years and i wasn't even cognitive for all of them 
Well, you already sound like you've got a head start on things. You've got a, you're very, you, you seem, uh, but just to have the perspective to know to talk to us seems like you've, you've, you've got a head start on, on keeping your nose clean and staying out of trouble. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I can't do you say stay out of trouble. That. I do try to stay out of trouble. I mean, now I try my best. I mean, considering seeing where my dad ended up, you know, but it's kind of hard. I really repeating. resent the, the, yeah, I am. I really am. When you're, what kinds of things are you getting in trouble for? Um, uh, nowadays it's pretty much just, it'd be like possession or being somewhere I'm not supposed to, hanging around motherfuckers I shouldn't. And I, I really don't anymore. When I was younger, I, I was hanging around some really grimy people. I, I didn't really have no friends. And the only people that were friends with me were the grimy kids on the side of town. So I got roped in with a real bad crowd. And then ultimately, mm-hmm. I feel like I just kind of copied down their mannerisms and started doing a whole bunch of, you know, shit I shouldn't. Like nowadays, I'm still you know, doing meth bombs. I'm taking a shitload of acid and Molly and I'm fucking doing black and Buddha every day. Like I can't, I you are a day where I don't do it. Yeah. What is black day. and Buddha? It's, it, it's a smokable form of opium. Um, black is oh, man. opium and meth with weed. Well, it sounds like you have a drug Buddha, problem. Um, yeah, I, I try my best to do it in moderation. Um, well, you can't, man. This is uh, serious stuff. This opioids are very serious. So they're very addictive, and you don't have necessarily yeah. the control to be in charge of that. So I would suggest I, I, you get some somewhat, professional help. I do. I do. I've been to rehab a few times. There's a lot of things I don't do anymore. I was doing heroin with my cousin. We were at my grandfather's house, and he dropped dead. We were going to the liquor store, and the, he was just laying in the screen door, and by the time he came back, he was still there and called the ambulance. Yikes. The dude wasn't even alive anymore, so that that got me to kick that. But can I ask you a question? I don't know. So I, I I know you said you went to rehab a few times. Are you like currently uh, have professional help? Yeah, yeah, I do. I see a therapist. I don't go to a psychiatrist okay. anymore. Um, I, I find frequently that going to them they don't ever talk to me about my problems they just kind of load me up on drugs and i'm like i already yeah. do that i'm looking to i'm looking to have someone sit down and have a conversation with me and to me it's not ideal therapy i kind of hate the idea of someone you know paying someone to care about you and i got a lot of people around me who care and listen mm-hmm. but I, I do seek out therapy even though i don't see it as you know so great it's just it's definitely what do you um what do you what do you aspire towards? What do you aspire to be, or what what are your interests? Like, what do you want to do with your life? Well, right now I'm getting my certifications from CompTIA. I'm getting an A plus, a Security plus, and a Network plus. Oh, wow! Um, those are the three main things I'm doing right now because I'm not going to like a college or anything. What are those? I missed what that is. Is that uh, like a tech uh, IT stuff? Oh, yeah, it basically, it, what I want to do is I'd start out in IT, and then I'd end up doing network security. It'd be ideal to work for okay. like a penetration testing company. That'd be pretty cool. Hey-o. <laughs> this is a cheap joke. I like uh, I like uh, that. I mean, you got your head on. You have like yeah, a, you so have that, like a, that, that's oh. why I'm confused, because it's like, well, then I don't think you should be, like, you got to lay off the hard stuff a little bit and focus and uh, get... Uh, you know, get get a get on a path towards success, which sounds like you're yeah, on the path. I, but the the opium, opi, opium, what op, are you taking? Opi. Opium. Yeah, man, that's like uh, that's that's bad news. Yeah, I'd I'd just try to get get that out of your life as soon as possible. Um, can I ask? I want to ask you this one. Sorry to be a downer, thing. but it I, seems. Like good advice, right? I think that's. I don't think you're being a downer by telling him not to do opium. I think that that's. No, I, I don't think so at all. I think it's very reasonable. I want to know one thing from you, and I, I yes, I like asking this to people. So you're you have professional help. That's good. Tell me, is there anything that you're there? I know you said you don't like therapy and whatnot, and I get it. But is there anything that your real therapist has told you that's been particularly helpful? Um, yeah, I, I really believe her when she says that it, 
most of my drug use is probably just me holding myself back because my dad wasn't around and like yeah. I got raped twice when I was a kid by a family member. So there's a lot of things that I feel like kind of took away my manhood. And now I don't have a mm. man in my life to kind of teach me to do that. So mm. I feel like in the times where I feel like I'm not doing so hot, that's when I go off and I start doing, you know, all the shit to make me happier. Like if I'm going to, you know, do a meth bomb or some molly or acid or shrooms, mm -hmm. like that's when that happens. But I just, Did I, you like replace really that stuff even... with like Oreos? Like have you had Oreos? They're very satisfying. Yeah, they're and like crack. Yeah, maybe it's. <laughs> maybe, I mean, perhaps it's not. It's also dangerous to overdo Oreos. Yeah, and, that's but, my that's my version of all this stuff. Sorry to interrupt. No, it's okay. I feel like I kind of replaced eating a lot with um with working out. I I don't like to eat too much anymore. I do eat three thousand calories a day because I'm trying to hit one eighty. I weigh one thirty nine right now, but. I mean, I think my main issue is that I can't commit to women. I'm, you know, I kind of just. Well, you're only 19. I, get high I, have to say. I, I thought this was early yeah. in the conversation. I thought it was going to be a little lighter. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, you're only 19. I don't think you should have a great expectation or anybody should have a great expectation from you to commit. Yeah. Uh, unless you're really feeling like, unless you have somebody that you really feel uh, you're like a special con connection where then you really want to be in the commitment. But if you're not feeling it, you're not feeling it. Um, and you do listen. I, I also, I want to, I want to say, and also, cause like you can't, if you're, if you are, have a lot of stuff you're working on for yourself, you can't, you don't want to bring another person's stuff into that. Cause you know, you got to figure out your own thing. Yeah. Aiden, I mean, look, man, you're a sound like a smart fucking guy. Absolutely. I'm, I'm really like, you're a smart fucking Thanks, guy. Man. You have your head on straight. Um, I know it's tough dealing with all this stuff where there's like physical fucking things going on, but like, dude, I follow. Like, I don't know if this means anything to you, but like, follow the light because it's bright up there. Well, and for also you, follow you know? your gut, and you don't need necessarily a father figure mm. because you seem like you get it, and you you can be you can let you can listen to yourself. And follow your your gut and your your inner 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 monologue or your inner voice that seems like knows what you need to do, but the idea of a father figure. I mean, I, I had a good dad. I have a good dad, but you know, there it's. I made I made a lot of things happen in my own head by thinking about it. Mm. And 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 if you're 19, uh, you know, maybe you can. Maybe there's somebody. Uh, I don't know. There's somebody else in your life that, that that where you where you're working that you could pick up little things from, or you know, I, I don't think that's an essential. It's not an excuse to be uh, doing these hard drugs and dangerous drugs because you don't have a father figure. I would, I try to like expunge that as an excuse or expunge that as a reason why you're not doing what uh, in a good. I agree. Place. I do think it's an excuse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a it's a convenient one. It's it sounds right, but it's, yeah. it's not necessarily the case. Um, Aiden, man, is there anything else that that, that you want to say about this, or that that you feel like we didn't cover, or just anything in general that you, that you want to say before we go? Um, no, no, I just really appreciate you guys taking the time to talk. I, mean, I appreciate it. The yeah, for sure, man. Helpful, and I think I'm Good. gonna wake up tomorrow and try to kick the black and blue. Maybe like try to microdose on some shrooms or something. I definitely don't. I think you guys are right. I don't think I need to be doing that shit, especially. Good. I don't like. I don't even have any pain, so I don't know why I'm doing it. You're right. And if if it might not be that easy, so if you if it if it is challenging, don't give up and reach out and find find some some real help because we're not that. No, not at all. We're not licensed. No, or of course I know that. I, I do know to seek out real help. I just really wanted to ask your guys' input on it. Like I said, you guys have been on this earth a lot longer than me, but the idea of people being 40 years old is just unfathomable to me i haven't even been cognitive for 20 years so i just really appreciate you guys giving me your insight on this i understand it's not a therapy sure, outline or anything but it, sure. it's been really helpful i do appreciate it i'm really going to take the advice to heart you're right good happy to do it hey take care Aiden. you guys have a great night i appreciate it you too man. yeah you too take care be safe man that guy he's like that's <sighs> It's confusing, right? Because it's, he's yeah. so articulate. And, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. You know, you could tell he's very. Seems like you could imagine that guy being very motivated. Yeah, absolutely. And then to hear him talk about doing meth bombs and black mm -hmm. and Buddha mm -hmm. just make me made me sad because mm -hmm. I, 
that's a that's a dark path if you're not mm-hmm. careful. Mm-hmm. I hope I, I don't know. It's I'm glad to hear he was saying that he's gonna go in, into IT and he has like a vi- like everything every, like the path forward felt very clear. Like that's what I meant when I was yeah. talking about the light. Like I really saw it in him. Yeah, you know. Yeah, when you're 19, I mean, life can seem uh, like that's all life is, that yeah. that little world you live in right there. Right. But, man, there's so much to come, there's so much fun, great stuff to come and adventures and 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 bad things are coming. Mm-hmm. And and but but exciting things are coming, too, when you're that age. When it's, when you were like 19 or early, tw- were you angsty as a person? Yeah, a little, little bit, probably yeah. a little bit. Yeah, a little angsty. But a bit of a bit of a goofball. I found I found the my wife told me the one of the greatest compliments she heard from somebody else yeah. about me just yeah. the other day because uh, there's a few of our friends that I've known um, I've known since college mm-hmm. that we're all still friends and, and and we're currently they have a daughter that's my son's age so we mm-hmm. see them a lot and my wife was like I was talking to uh, Christina and. We were talking about all you guys back in the old days, back in the college days, and yeah. what you were all like, and how different you all were. But she said, "But Tim was is is this is the same as he was? He's the same as he was really? then as he is now. Really? And it was a compliment. It wasn't like yeah. he's always, you know. Yeah. It was like he, he's been very, he's very even. Uh, he's funny, you know, and and can be, you know, is not perfect, but." He's uh he's always been the same. This it's, this is kind of interesting transition into something I did want to talk to you about, and I've heard you talk about it on other podcasts. Like you're you're making more sincere appearances as yourself. Do you feel like um, anything like within you changed to want to be less? I guess fuck aroundy. Yeah, like like. I, perhaps having kids is a bigger deal than I thought it was going to be. Uh-huh. But also, um, the analogy, if people might not know this reference, but Andy Kaufman. Yeah. Andy Kaufman was very a big inf- influential person to me. He was almost entirely always in character whenever you saw him. He was always doing some bit. He was always doing, uh, you know, not not talking about himself in, in any kind of genuine way. Yeah. And uh, that was his whole thing. And that was what I wanted to do. And that's what I, Eric wanted to do. And that was kind of all our our focus on that. Aside from the making of the stuff, it was like, well, if I was going to do an interview or, or, you know, be on somebody's show, I would want to make sure that there was that it was funny and that it was interesting and yes. so, challenging in some way. Mm-hmm. Andy Kaufman died, you know, when he was... I think 38 or 40 or something. Yeah, mid, pretty, mid pretty 30s, young. I think. Maybe, yeah, maybe mid 30s, died of cancer. And I always say, like, if he had lived, that shtick would have gotten old. Mm-hmm. You know, that he wouldn't have been able to keep that going. Mm-hmm. It would have, it, for himself, he would have been exhausted by it and it would have, wouldn't have been fun anymore. And so uh, I still like to jo- laugh and joke around. And if there's some occasion that, that, feels right to do a bit with and, yeah. and to be in character i'm certainly lots of places but i don't want to like pr- stop myself from just being myself for the for what for no reason anymore yeah and i find i have more to offer than just than just doing bits were when you started having more sincere appearances as you, was any part of you afraid that it would dilute when you do want to go out and do bits uh no, I mean, if I'm gonna do a bit, it, yeah. m- now it would it would be I don't know. There'd be something very clearly signaling that sure. in, the, in what I'm doing or yeah. talking about. But I still get. I mean, there's still people, and and we live very much in an age now, I believe, of of literalism, and and people are very. It's which is a little paradoxical because huh. you think everybody would be so skeptical, but people are very quick to believe what they see and hear, huh. right? Yeah. Do you agree? Um, I see what you're saying. The more people are taking things at face value. Yeah. Yes. For I instance, it, yeah. I assume that when I said I was a Scientologist, mm-hmm. that a large number of people just were like, "Oh, this guy's a he's Scientologist. a Scientologist. Yeah. Why mm-hmm. would he joke? Why would he not? Why would he be lying? <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. But I have a very like you know 
dry sense of humor. Uh huh. And it also might not click with a lot of people. But yeah. when it does click with people, the people that know me and get my rhythms mm-hmm. or whatever. Uh, might have enjoyed that joke because right. they know I'm not a Scientologist. Well, I mean, part of them enjoying uh, the joke, yeah, I mean, I, of course, but like a part of them enjoying the joke is the people that don't, don't get the joke, get the joke yeah. of course. But um, obviously, I think even in my uh, most most sort of nihilistic or or confrontational comedy, yeah. there's still an, in me a uh, desire to express myself mm-hmm. and to be understood, mm. right? Mm. And to be a pre and to be uh, a, you know rewarded through applause. We, we were talking about that yeah. earlier. The the appreciate yeah. you being was like that's what we're doing. Do you feel like you the mediums that you were uh, going through and the way that you were going about it? Do you feel like you were not being understood through that? Well, I was being understood by uh, a portion of a small group of, of people. Yeah, who who really got it. Yeah, really felt personal connection to it. Of course. Um, but that, you know, then there's a, a big bucket of people that didn't and were, didn't, didn't care for it at all, which is, you know, I mean, that's, that's everybody, mm-hmm. but, and I, and we, I, I don't, I guess, uh, we never try to win over the whole room. Yeah. You just do what you do. You just do whatever is in your mind and you try to make it as good as it can be and hope it works. Mm-hmm. I'd prefer everybody Loved all her, you know. I don't, I'm not trying to. Really? Well, sure. Why not? Oh, you know, I feel it, like even like, like as a just as like being a human being, if your desire is for like if you're just living your life and you want everyone to like well, you, just as a person, it's different. It's different I, with being a person than with making a thing. I guess I mean from a uh, from a business perspective, from a economic perspective. Mm-hmm. The more people that are into your shit, the, the more easier Patagonia it is. You can buy. The, the, yeah, the more t- t-shirts I can get. Sure. Or just the, the easier it is to do stuff, which is the easier it is to make stuff. Because okay, then sure, you yeah, have sure, power, sure, you sure, have sure, control. Sure. Um, so, like, my favorite group is the Beatles. Yeah. I don't. Th- I think they certainly probably did things to try to appeal to as many people as yeah. possible. But they didn't go out of their... They didn't go crazy doing that. They just were themselves. Yeah. And they did it. Over and they worked really hard on it, and they got really good at it. But they were pretty much just them doing what they wanted to do, mm. and for whatever reason, that connected with everybody. And you felt like but, being being uh, not being understood by, you know, broadly made it harder to just make stuff and get like yeah, the money that you need. Yeah, to get I mean, by the fucking cameras. And we're all in that. that level of in this. We're not at this level, but we're in that pool of like David Lynch or, or yeah. people that that are doing very. Uh, personal things that are that we all know like i know when we're making stuff that's like well this isn't for my mom you know this isn't for Mm. uh but i went but at the same time i could still wish that it was more about it's more about them than us you know what i mean yeah but the people who it's for they love you know absolutely love it it so much and it's great and so like i said we're i'm never trying to do i'm never like changing my approach to reach a more a bigger audience, all yeah. I'm saying is, how nice would it be if we were the Beatles? But I think that's the Beatles ridiculous. Would suck. Uh, well, two of them are dead. Two of them are dead. One Which sounds kind of nice from violence, yeah. uh, gun violence. Gun One violence. from uh, cancer. But they say, do you know about George Harrison being violently knife attacked in his home? No, I don't. What happened? Uh, like few, you know, before he died, obviously. <laughs> Uh, he was a, a, a crazed person broke into his house mm-hmm. and attacked him with a knife and nearly mm-hmm. killed him. Mm-hmm. And they say that kind of um, sped up his, his own death. That's just... Uh, getting stabbed but, with a knife will absolutely speed up your own yeah. death in many situations. So yes, there's a downside to being in the Beatles, I guess. But um, I don't know. I'm not sure where the question started. But well, Beatles or not, you will die. The trick is... The other truth is, like as I get older... Uh, it's exhausting to, to come up with, you know, bits every time somebody asks me. So it's sort of like, yeah. I better let that go because yeah. I actually do. There's, you know, like there's many sides to what I want to do. And I'm absolutely in uh, loving the hell out of talking to people. You know, Fuck yeah, I, good, I love it. Good, so good, good. I'm not forcing myself into doing something I don't want to do. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it would be stupid and embarrassing and cringy if I was like doing a bit 
this whole time. The whole time. Uh, you, you can't know what I mean? do when you're doing it like when you're it's just for exhausting. eleven minutes. You can do it. Well, I mean, you've done a bit for four hours at a time. Yeah. Before, well, but, but it, it it is it when that's when I want that idea to exist. Yes. And it's controlled and it's worked on and it's it's put out there for a reason. But yeah, if my whole identity is wrapped in irony and bits. You know, mm. I'm a miserable guy. Oh yeah, and clearly I'm not a miserable guy. <laughs> <laughs> I th- first when I first started doing this, I was a little bit more um, let's, let's, a little bit more distant, a little yeah. bit more like maybe I'll like fuck with people and yeah. like. But then you talk to that guy and you're like, I can't fuck with that guy. I can't fuck with that yeah. dude. That's what ha- I when I was in high school, I was so I was I wanted to make stuff like like I saw like Kyle Mooney's interviews yeah. where he would do on the street stuff and like fuck with people and I was like that is hilarious I want to do that and I would fuck with people and then folks start you know like I'm and folks start like you know getting vulnerable and you're like I can't fuck with them no. and even and now I'm like I I I it's more enjoyable to not yeah. fuck with people I don't and know And it's part of I think my evolution's happening at the same time as I think comedy might be evolving in a way of we we've like the man on the street prank show the prank shows the it, it's funny but it some of it feels a little like do we do, we're all tired like mean spirited you feel mean, yeah like we don't we don't well and it's and, it, and it's overdone and it's done, been done a million times right. and stuff so uh, it's a uh, i mean yeah uh, it, there's still people doing great work and and funny stuff but I think a lot of people I know yeah. in comedy are having this kind of like, what are we doing here? I lifetime is, and we, but yeah. we also know that there's value in making people laugh because f- laughing is a good, healthy thing to do, and mm-hmm. uh, and so I don't know, you know, just uh, as you get older, you just you look at your work, you look at other people's work, and you think, all right, well, what 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 am I do? What, what could be? What's the best way to do this? Mm-hmm. You know. And sometimes it isn't being entirely entrenched in irony. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, you're totally right that that would just be exhausting. I yeah. mean, if I did this pod, it's like if you do a podcast mm-hmm. where you're talking to people or where you're just live for hours a week, to be in a thing like that is fucking exhausting. Take a call. <laughs> As you wish. Hello. 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 Is this the Gek? This is two geckos. This is uh, Lyle and Tim, and we're geckos, and we're talking to people, and we're living life. How you doing? Oh, my God. I'm good. How are you guys? Great. What's uh, what's going on, Riley? How's life? <laughs> um, uh, I called in to talk about my irrational fear of butterflies. Irrational fear of butterflies. It's not irrational. You should be very say. afraid. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. In many countries, butterflies have uh, <laughs> venomous bites, actually. Yeah, I'd stay the hell away. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Where's your fear come from? I have no idea because I've always had it. Like, I remember in kindergarten, we were like, we had like this butterfly project where we would like sort of grow them in the classroom and I was just horrified I couldn't go near the cages and I would like draw pictures of like fanged butterflies and give them to my parents and like it's been like a long time and I don't know where it stems Hmm. from Hmm. what about moths you know I haven't really had a whole lot of experience with like big scary moths but I can imagine they would be the same gotcha I feel like it'd be worse I don't think it'd be the same. Moths are kind of gross. Moths are. But then when gross. you crack, when you they smash them, they just turn to dust a lot of time. Yeah. Just that butterflies cool. are the same thing. <laughs> really? I have. I've never crushed. A a, I've never touched a butterfly. You've never touched a butterfly. I've never. Hurt, I've never killed a butterfly. It seems like bad luck. Have you ever killed a butterfly, Riley? I, I have not. Voice. I don't get close enough to do that. Um. I just now. Stay away. I didn't use exposure oh. therapy, but it, it hasn't worked. Oh yeah, my boyfriend's here. He took me to oh. a butterfly room once, and it was horrible. Did he know? Did he take you to a butterfly room knowing that you're afraid of butterflies? <laughs> yes. Here's what I'm going to predict. I have a little. I don't like to make predictions, but here's my prediction. How old are you, Riley? Eighteen. Okay, Riley. 
I'm going to predict, I'm, I'm envisioning Riley as a 35-year-old woman, very <laughs> confident in her life. Maybe she's not with this dude she's with now. Believe me, I don't think that's happening. But you're a very, you're in a great place. You're in a great, great, you're married or whatever you are. Maybe you got a couple of kids. You're having a glass of wine. Hey, man, what the hell, it's your birthday, right? And you and your friends, your good yeah. friends from high school, some of them, and some work friends, you're sitting around and you're laughing and you're talking about the old days. And you go, do you know something? This is so embarrassing. When I was 18, I was so scared of, and they go, what, uh, getting killed or what? Uh, we were so scared of what, uh, falling off a bridge? No, I was scared of butterflies. Can you believe it? <laughs> You're all laughing, tears rolling down your face. And you won't even remember why. All you remember is that you were scared of butterflies. And, it, you know, it's just going to pass. I love that. That's some good perspective. What do you think of that, Riley? I mean, yeah, that makes sense. The only thing is, I like, I know they're harmless. Like, I'm not like afraid of what they'll do to me or anything. But like, every time I see one and every time it comes near me, it's like an instant like fight or flight reaction. Like, I don't know what it is. I know that they're safe, but they're just. They're I think about you it. should choose fight every time yeah. until <laughs> all of the butterflies are gone and that way you won't have a problem anymore yes the world would be a better place are you in a high butterfly sure. population area <laughs> do you need to not move not really possibly I'm in like the least populated butterfly well, zone by the way can we like talk to your boyfriend for like two Washington. seconds can you put him on for like a second yeah go for it hi Tim I'm a huge fan <clears throat> I'm kind of it's always the boyfriend. The right now. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm sorry I disparaged your relationship there. I'm. I just. I don't know. Well, well I was yeah. gonna. Why? Why? Why was it? Okay, because I'm thinking two things. Did you take her to the butterfly sanctuary in as an act of good faith because you thought it'd be exposure therapy, or because you thought it would be funny, or maybe a little bit of both? I gotta say, it's probably a little bit of both, but mostly exposure therapy because I think it's funny when like we're outside and one passes by and she flips out so like maybe if we go to a room then she'll like oh they're harmless didn't work though and you're not allowed to kill this any guy's butterflies keeper. so fight wasn't an option i take it back you guys are going to be together on that 35th birthday glass <laughs> glass of wine uh riley anything else you want to say to the people Please. at the computer before we go um what about you kale uh I have a wrestling tournament on Saturday. If you guys could just wish me good luck, that would mean the world. Good luck. Good or luck. Maybe that's not allowed. Yeah, pin them. Thank you. Pin them. <laughs> pin them. Pin them quickly. Hey, take care, Riley. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Wrestling is um, it's a lot. Oh, I was terrible. I, I used to do this thing fourth called grade wrestling. You were fourth grade wrestling. Yeah, terrible. Yeah. Just get pinned right away. I used to do sock wrestling. You know what that is? No. It's uh, like we stand like this, and I try to take your sock off, and you try to take off my oh. sock. <laughs> so I feel fun. like it's more... Um, I would teach my kids that. that I bet yeah. they'd love that. Yeah, we did that at uh, at camp. Mm. Sounds abusive. Get this. Another Riley. Come on. Riley. That it is. How you doing? Hello. Riley with a man's voice. Yeah, I, I get that a lot, actually. How is it hanging? I'm doing all right. I'm just about to uh, head off to work. Um, Riley, is there anything in particular you called in to talk about today? Yeah. I have a little dilemma on my hands, actually. Um, a couple months ago, I was at a uh, yard sale. And, like, uh, I found it on Facebook. It was a Facebook yeah, it was Facebook. Went on to Facebook and I bought like uh, this crate of old games off this old lady that she posted on the yard sale site. And um, <laughs> um, apparently she was not supposed to do that. And apparently, I don't know how they did it. They probably like looked me up in the group or something, but they trapped me down and asked for the stuff back. 
Mm. And so somebody yeah. owned the get box of tapes and she just put it out accidentally. Yeah, like they were all old, like uh, video games from like the NES all the way up uh, to like uh, I think the newest one was like the Wii. It's and no dilemma, yeah, right? um, give the give, give the, the fucking get, games yeah, back. Get your money. Like, <laughs> say say sorry or say oh yeah, this stuff happens, you know. And uh, sorry, no hard feelings. Wait, 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 and, like, uh, well, I'm gonna give. I was gonna. Like, I'm gonna give you. I want to. Like, do you have a compelling reason? As to why you want to keep the games. Yes. Um, I do collect old games. Like, I have a collection <laughs> that I Get them from somewhere else. You don't think that stuff is, like, everywhere? Well, well, I thought it would be you, like, uh, oh, but I gave them to my little cousin, and now he... Or something yeah, like that. It's all about him. No, like, uh, <laughs> like um, these are, like, rare games. You know the who you you know who there. you are you know you ever seen Toy Story two? Yeah, you're you're I have Al, yeah. fucking Alf yeah. Toy Barn guy. Yeah, yeah that the, guy. The guy from Science. Wait, 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 yeah. I'm not sell, I'm not selling them. Like I want to keep them for me. Well, what did these guys say? Like, um, they, they were her. They said, oh, like, listen, adult. Wait, what? Well, there's no adults in this situation. Believe me. <laughs> um. <laughs> the, <laughs> what what were you going to say? You were going to say the the reason why they want them back. Which what what's the reason like, they told you they want them back? Well, apparently, like they weren't supposed to put them out, but they did anyway. And I just yeah, happened to be you know. there. All right. And well, do, do you know that Reddit? What's that Reddit? Am I the am asshole? I the asshole? You're the asshole. I hate to tell you, because. You have every right to keep the games, mm -hmm. okay? Under the law, yeah. you mm -hmm. can keep the games. But if you've absorbed the situation that there was a mistake made, the nice thing to do mm -hmm. would be to return the games and get your money back, assuming mm -hmm. they would give you all your money back, I would assume. That's that's part of the deal, right? Yeah, like, so I didn't just pay be much a good for guy them. Like, and Just be a do, do like, I this would be to, such a, you're, but... only, you're 22 years old. This is a great yeah. opportunity for you to say, I made a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. I did something I didn't want to do. I'm giving up this irrelevant thing that I'm collecting. No disrespect. But, I, I mean, I, I, I'll, I'll retract that. I, I can honor and respect your, your desire to collect things. I don't per personally understand it. But, okay, let's, let's just say this is important to you. Just, right? Am I wrong? Do the right thing. Do the, yeah. Just what? do the right thing. Return it. I bet you, I, I don't believe in this kind of stuff, but I bet you two days later, something good's gonna, yeah, something's going to happen. Something great's going to happen. I also just do don't it. believe. Can I just get yeah. your pledge that you will do that? What do we think here, Riley? <laughs> well, I want to, but like there are some games in there. There's <laughs> one in particular. It's a Pokemon Gale of Darkness, and it goes for $250 online. All right, well, maybe you can negotiate with these guys. I not just two hundred fifty. Two hundred fifty dollars. That's. I mean, that's no. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, mm -hmm. you you can't hang on to two hundred fifty dollars like it's the only thing that exists in the world. Mm -hmm. So, if you want to, maybe I would say, do one round of negotiating with these guys. I feel like and that makes this. it. I that that's that makes well, it just, that makes it worse. Me, I almost think that makes it worse. Let me than just, just say this. Them. Do, do they have an awareness of the value of these games? I don't think the woman that sold me them does, but I think like that guy right. who owned the games yeah. does. And that's why he wants. Well, to Well, yeah, I'll give you this. And uh, option A is just do just just be a nice guy and give him back and say, yeah. oh man. Option B is. Hey, I, uh, I just want you to know, uh, I, I, so I collect these games. Uh, there's one game in here that has a good, good value to it. Uh, would you oh, be, there's multiple. Uh, okay, well, there's multiple. So, so you, so, I mean, listen, I, I just give them back. Riley. This is too, this is too much of a, this is too much. It, We've it, been it, talking about R Riley, Riley. Well, no, I, I, I would, yeah. Yeah. it's not that yeah. we're talking about it too much, but, uh, it's too complicated to 
um, try to go in there and make a deal. Yeah. And then you don't want this guy, like, you're just a dick if you don't do it. Yeah. Because it's just, he seem, you know, it seems like it was an honest mistake. So I would say, like, uh, if Elsa says, let it go, let it go. <laughs> I hate on. that movie. Riley, give the fucking games back. Give them back. Uh, perhaps you're right. But if you really want to push the issue, say, listen, these, I collect these games. Um, why, why don't, what did you pay for them? I paid 50 bucks for the whole okay. box. So I'll tell you what. You want, to be a real, you want to be a good guy? Say, I collect these games. Some of these games are very important to me. Could I give you an extra 50 bucks for it? So you're giving them, Ooh. You're giving them 100 bucks total. Okay. And you're still going to come out if you want to sell these games. That's actually a money. damn good compromise. If they say, no, no, we want them back, say, okay, no problem. I'll come by and drop them off. That's a damn no good feels. compromise. You know, give it, give it a shot. Uh, you to- he totally uh, yeah. does not want to give them extra 50 bucks for these, for these games. I, I, I see where you're coming from. I, I think that's the road I'm going to go down. Like, see if I can give them like a little bit more so I can keep them. Yeah. You don't think these guys yeah, are going to go uh, on to eBay and look up how, how much these things are? You'd be surprised. A lot of people start selling shit that yeah. they just they don't even care to do that. They right. just want it out of the house. Yeah, yeah. I think that's like what the originally was the purpose of the art sale, and that's why like. Uh, they put him out. All right. Well, let's get an update on this one. I am almost. I am. I would not be surprised if you tried to sell this game. You didn't give him back. You tried to sell them on eBay, and you somehow got scammed. Yeah, he, and you sent it the game. Yeah, no, um, the money in some karmatic yeah. thing. No, like I don't. Uh, I'm. I don't. I'm not a scalper. Like. Uh, I don't do that. My one friend does that. He actually, he 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 was the one that introduced me to the. <laughs> okay, Facebook so there's group a larger that, like, where community we find all- of. Yeah. Uh... Well, thank you for not turning to these friends for advice. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, Mr. Bradley, yeah. is there anything He's else you want to say to the people the computer group. before we go? Um, uh, I uh, I think I'm gonna go down the road. I I'll I'll uh, negotiate with them. And if they don't want the money, you, you're probably right. It was a it was a mistake. I guess I'll I guess I'll give them it back. Beautiful, very good. Proud of you. Thanks Proud for of calling, you, Riley. Riley. Thank you. Isn't it great when you get through to someone? We'll see. I mean, I think <laughs> you might have been trying <laughs> to might, save face some on the call. Service. Yeah, that's so funny that he was like, "I don't do that," but I have a friend who does. <laughs> yeah, that's a great story. It's a great story, and it's shocking because uh, some. There's some goons out there that would be like, hey, you paid for it. You should get, you know, the transaction occurred. They yes. go to the letter of the law. Go to the letter of the law, yeah. But we have to be bigger than that sometimes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I don't. we don't know the whole situation. Mm-hmm. Well, I wanted to give him the benefit. I thought he would have some, I can't think of what it is, some creative compelling thing he gave him to somebody else already or something yeah. like that where it makes it more he of a complex. Wants them. But he just wants them. <laughs> that was it's it. Like his, uh, like his, uh, his, what's the guy from the Lord of the Rings? My... Uh, my uh, precious. Oh, I, yeah. thought you, I thought this was Schmeagle. Mr. Burns. No, it's uh, my sh- my precious. Hello. Hi. How you doing? Good. How are you doing? Doing well. Hanging in there. You're on the phone with uh, Lyle and Tim. We're two geckos. We're hanging out. What can we do you for? Your name is Lauren. Yeah, I. My name is Lauren, and I have a little silly, little silly story for you. I'm into a silly story. Yeah. So, do I just begin? You, you, anything? You... Please start in the middle. <laughs> can you, can you, can we Pulp Fiction this? Let's do yeah, Tell it out of uh, out of order. Okay. Well, one time, um, me and my husband were having some fun, and I knew how to queef on demand. So I thought if I could just duck in. And as I was sucking in, he could put a ping pong ping pong ball inside there, and I sucked it. And he put the ping pong ball inside, and I pushed it out, and it almost hit our ceiling fan. And I haven't been able to do it since. But my goodness, what a silly story that I would love to tell a gecko. The how do you see? 
how do you suck in, like how, like how do you charge a queef like that? The fact that you Kegel, Kegel muscle. Cause you, cause you, I can't, I could, I, I can't, like I can fart, but I can't charge. I can't suck my fart in to give it some like start running space to to charge out. That's kind of a fascinating thing. It's it's like a weird muscle. It's like it's it, sometimes people know how to move their eyebrows up and down, and some people don't. You either like know how to use that muscle, or you don't know right. how to use that muscle. I move. I believe me. I'm moving my eyebrows up and down during this call. What? <laughs> like, but can you do it like one time and another? Like, it's like weird to control those yeah. different muscles and like, and like I can queef on demand. I can also sometimes fart on demand, but like I have to be in the right position. So maybe you um, have to like experiment with that. You know, I I appreciate you telling this story. I do have one th- thing. Uh. This ability to queef on demand, has it been uh, helpful for you in any practical sense? Has you, have you gotten any money from this? Have you gotten any fame? for Like, what has it really done for you uh, empirically? It hasn't really done anything great. Okay. I mean, just I guess if I ever had do. a tampon stuck in. Yeah, it's like a weird like party trick. Like, hey guys, guess what I could do? Mm-hmm. At a certain kind of party. Can you do it on the call here? Yeah, well, like, good friends. I don't think I can. I have an IUD in, and, like, I'm so nervous that I'll pop it out one day. So oh, yeah. I need to practice my muscles again. I was just I hypothetically asking. I wasn't requesting. Mm-hmm. Um, I would have, well, but I don't think I could. Well, Lauren, uh, listen, call back in um, another time whenever you whenever you want to. And, um, you know, if you if you feel like... We feel like updating us on this. If you found a way to make this like a business somehow, turn not to everything's hobby. about money. Some things about just having fun, <laughs> but it could be. Well, I'm sure I would you love believe to me. There's whole you. websites dedicated to this. Oh, I've heard of yeah. those. I'm I've not really that kind of person. Sure. Did you want to hear another weird vagina story? Sure. All right. So one time I was a little drunk. I'm watching RuPaul's race. I'm trimming my pubes with scissors. I'm not looking. I'm hunched like over the trash can and snip. I cut a piece of my labia off. Hi. Is that, did that happen before yeah, or really after sucks. you gained the queefing powers? Cause maybe that is the secret somehow to the abilities that you've gained. Did it hurt? It didn't hurt right when I did it. I was kind of like, holy shit, that just mm-hmm. fucking happened. So it Does happened. It grow back? And then my husband was. Well, actually, it didn't like cut off all the way. I sliced mm-hmm. it, and my husband <sighs> like pinched the lip mm-hmm. back to where it was supposed to by be. By the so way. It's a little now. By the way, this officially makes you Jewish. <laughs> How does that make me Jewish? Circum. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Um, anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go, Lauren? Um, thank you for taking my call. You guys are so funny to be around, and I aspire to be like you one day, Lyle, Jack. Oh, man. Thank you, Lauren. I appreciate that. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Talk to you later, man. I aspire to be like you. I want to queef a ping pong ball out of my vagina. That could be fun. Sure. Hi. Hello. How are you? Oh, I'm doing good, man. How are you? Um, hanging in there. Your name is uh, Bless22 from Maryland. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. How's it hanging, man? How can we get you today? So basically, like, um, I'm moving away this year. I got into college and, like, I'm excited and, and everything. But I'm, I'm concerned about dating and, like, sex and all the other stuff because I... Uh, I have a I have a micro penis, so it just it's just difficult. Like I I have a lot of shame about it, and I just I, I wanted to know if you guys could give me a, any advice or like you know recommendations. You know, mo- moving forward in my life to like kind of overcome this insecurity. Well, I, I, there are other ways to uh, please. 
women? Have you? Are you a virgin? Mm, I mean, technically, yes. Like, yeah. Yeah. Let me say something. Sexual intercourse is of is just a little part of a human being's life. Some people it's not. Some people it's all they can think about. Some people they're obsessed with it and they 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 can't do anything but you know, a well-rounded person, it's not the, the it's not it shouldn't be your your uh, the only thing that that you worry about or think about or the only thing that gives you pleasure. Uh but I don't know much. I'm not. I don't know enough about the anatomy to know how this might prohibit you from per- performing uh, sexually. Can you? I don't know enough of what you. When you say micropenis, I don't know if you're being. A, is that a clinical term or is that a? Is that just yeah, like? Yeah, are you just a, a dis- So yeah. So under under like two and a half inches erect. Well, but but you can you can you can uh, become erect and you can uh, come. Yes, yeah, I can. So you can your your sexual organs work properly. They're just not to the dimensions that are more that are uh, that are considered normal in society at these days. Exactly, exactly. The common talking point on this. Is, I, I, uh, and please, because I don't know the common talk. Like I don't, I really don't know because I'm out of the game. You know what I mean? Is um, you know, if you are not able to uh, perform very well in traditional sexual intercourse, there is the the avenue of oral mm-hmm. sexual intercourse. Uh, there are there's guy, gu- you know, there's guides. On the internet, yeah. Have you done? Have you looked into the into this on the internet, like uh, micro penis yeah, uh, I, dating? Like, so what? Are, what do they say? I mean, Just there, there's a lot of forums and stuff. Like, you get a lot of mm-hmm. support on the on it, but yeah, a lot of the guys on there are kind of fatalistic about it. Like, mm. it's like, uh, yeah. So it's not it's not very encouraging for me to go online. So I, I try to. Ignored a bit. Hmm. Well, no one knows what you've got between your legs uh, unless you want them to know, right? So there's that. You don't have to walk around thinking everybody knows your situation. Uh, but if you're gonna, if you like some girl and she seems to like you, I would be, you know, it's gonna come up. Talk about it. Uh, boy, I don't know, man. I feel, I feel a little. Uh, I don't want to just give you a flippant joke answer or anything like that it, uh, but uh but your no, it, your, it's okay bro your sexual I'm, organs I'm is not so, your is friends, not your identity it's they, not who you are know. can can i i want, I want okay. to ask you are, is is and you give me the truthful answer to this question how important yeah. is sex to you very very important oh, i uh, okay. like yeah i i really like i just I, I see it as something to attend. Like, I think I've been into it since I was, like, really young. I think that I've been more sexual than other people. And it's, like, if I'm not able to please my partner, like, it really, yeah, I think it really affects, like, how, how I feel about myself and whatnot. But mm-hmm. I, I see it That's as interesting a interesting because it seems like you're setting yourself up for, for uh, you know, you're setting your expectations too high, like, on purpose almost. Hmm. How do you how do you what feel do you like mean? he's setting his expectations high? Well, uh, if you if you place a great amount of importance on uh, performing sexually, yeah. knowing the condition you have, mm-hmm. and knowing there doesn't seem to be anything you uh, can do about it, unless there are uh, additional aids, like uh, you know, uh, uh, what do you call them? The, dildos, the, the dil- dildos, vibrators, Dildo dildos, vibrators, vibrators. Um, you know, unless you want to go that route. You are creating a, a scenario where you're going to disappoint yourself and the other person. Right, right. So don't do that. 
And also, there's a th I really strongly believe, just by the sheer volume of people, that every kind of person exists. So there, and the great thing about the relationship issues is you only need to find one of yeah. this kind of person. Every kind of person. There does exist. I, there has to. There has to. Just are you a good volume. looking? Are you a true? I mean, do you consider yourself a good looking guy? Not really. Like, oh, I think I think that like, but that could just be like low self esteem. Like, mm. I'm I'm not sure. I don't think so, like some sometimes like some sometimes, but I don't think so personally. Who do you look like? Uh, do you have like a celebrity? Um comparison or yeah, somebody that we, uh, maybe we would know that we can kind of give a get a barometer do you guys know from. like uh do you guys know travis smiley yeah yeah i remember travis like, smiley uh, he was a tavis smiley tavis tavis smiley who he was yeah, like yeah, a yeah, 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 yeah. yeah he was like a late night talk show host it was like a serious interview show okay i've seen i yeah. I, I, i've it's heard like, the name like a mix of tavis like, smiley and like arsenio hall like but, but okay. like skinny you're skinny. Yeah. He's a good looking guy. I'm looking him up right now. He's he's not a he's not a bad looking guy. Not a bad looking Arsenio guy. Arsenio Hall is not a bad looking guy no. either. Well, I first of all I think And then that's another should, thing too, is like I'm I'm black and I think that people expect like the opposite of sure, what there's I am. a yeah, sure. There's a stereotype there associated with Well, it'd be a pleasant surprise for somebody, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe they're worried that it's you have, true. But uh, I do think at your age, it's natural to have sort of, uh, you know, preoccupation with sex, but it definitely diminishes over time <laughs> uh, as your hormones change. And try to put your sexual uh, life in perspective of n not making it the only thing that you are trying to, uh, you know, l find enjoyment out of. Like There's more to life. And, you know, don't just shut the door on the idea that maybe, like you said, there's somebody out there that is there's so many totally There's fine. so many people. Yeah. There's so many people. You, you, there exists, there is a girl out there who doesn't care about the micropenis. Yeah. Even if most would, might care, it, that doesn't even, it doesn't fucking matter. Because once you find the one that doesn't, yeah. it, you know, it's And let me over. say, you're also a product of, of society where... Why are we making small dick jokes? Like I'm not, but of course that's a, that's like the easiest. It's on TV all the time. You grew that's up true. with it. I'm sure you grew up with it. Jokes about your penis size. It's it's ingrained in our culture, and it and this is a good example of how damaging or hurtful that can be. You got a guy out there that has a real condition, and it's it's causing you uh, you know stress. So this is a larger concern, but. Uh, there's nothing wrong with somebody having a small penis or a big penis, or whatever. It's just the way you are. How you feeling, Bless? Yeah, I, I actually like that advice. Like, uh, set, set your expectations properly. Yeah, try to, or at least try that's to. not something that you can just do automatically. It, no, that it takes, takes a long time. It takes a little work, and yeah. and it doesn't happen right away. So, but just keep that in the back of your head and try to breathe and. Meditate and and eat healthy and live live try to live a, a balanced life. Um, Bless, is there anything else you want to say to me or Tim or God or the people at the computer before we go? I love you guys, man. You guys are cool, bro. I, I, I love everyone. Thanks, I hope man. everyone has like a good life and shit. And um, yeah, be nice to people. Thank you, Bless. Appreciate you calling, man. Take care. All right. Bye. Um. Are you horny? In, gen in general? In ge yeah, in general. I mean, like, uh, 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 no, not 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 to a place where it's a problem, you know? Or, okay. I mean, just normal. I feel fairly, fairly normal, if maybe a little under horny. Under horny. Yeah. Is, is, have you always kind of been? Yeah, I've never been much of a, I, I never, I, uh, yeah, I was never like, that was never my prime focus. It was what about, what about not even like with dating and stuff, but what about like, how often do you masturbate? Mm. Maybe once or twice a week. Okay, that's pretty. That's pretty. That's pretty. Not that's that's. I, I would. I think personal. that's far below. 
Average. Yeah. Um, it, it's it's more. Uh, yeah. I. I again. I. I. Uh, there's things I just. Um, there's. I love laughing. Laughing is laughing your jerking is my, off. Is the best. No, I don't know. Um, yeah. Is there I'm something pretty, orgasmic? I'm, pretty, I, I'm still fairly private and guarded about my that part of my life. Oh, okay. But um, yeah, I, uh, there's you know there, there's certainly people that uh, that's what they got on their brain. Sure. Not so much me. Okay. I fit, I, I don't know if that was an uncomfortable thing to ask you. Sure, of course. I'm a, but, pr- well, I'm, pr- I'm a little prudish or a little Puritan in the discussion of the subject in general. You know. You understand why I would not think that. Right. No. Well, because uh, you, uh, I mean, a lot of the stuff you make is like s- sex related and very. Yeah, uh, but it's like, dis- it's like the most grotesque version of it. Sure. You know, it's not, it's a mockery of uh, sexual obsession. Interesting. Right. It's not a, it's not a, hu- it's not a genuine express i'm not like uh i don't know who you know making some kind of porno yeah i'm we're making fun of that that uh obsession Make, making fun of the sex obsession yeah okay i think so no I, I, and that wasn't always my bag anyway no if i ask this yet but do you have vices do you have like what do you do you, do you do anything that you consider like well, I've, like I've, I've, I've uh, admitted to gummies at night to sleep. Uh, <laughs> I don't uh, know. If, mushrooms. I don't know if gummies at night. Mushrooms. Uh, I mean, I, I, you know, I've lost a lot of weight. And, yeah. And uh, I'm ha- very proud of that and very happy with that feeling of not, of dropping some pounds. I, I would say I have, you know, I love sweets. I love chocolate and, and Reese's Pieces. Who doesn't? Who doesn't? But like I could go pieces. nuts on that stuff. You're like ET. Yeah, I could. We was when we were shooting Awesome Show. We would like bowlfuls of Reese's pieces, bowlfuls, mm-hmm. and so you know, I've I've always had issues with with overeating, and mm-hmm. uh, but that, that's really it. I don't uh, drink that much. I I go through. Uh, you know, there's certain if I'm on tour or, or you know, I might drink more than I would be if I if I was at home. Sure, a couple beers. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I'm pretty uh, I'm yeah, pretty boring mm-hmm. in that respect. It's funny to think that you know, you get it a lot of like people are like, oh, you must have been on drugs doing this stuff, but it wasn't drugs. It was Reese's Pieces. It was sugar, pure sugar. I drink coffee in the morning. Okay. You put cream in it? Nope, black. I have to know what. This and I do is. have office hours tomorrow morning. By the way, I should plug that my birthday episode of Office Hours. Oh yeah, yeah. Wait, do you, do you want to plug at the end or plug right now? What do you prefer? You can plug right now. I do a plug. We have someone on the phone. Oh yeah, let's plug to call. them. Who's on the call? Hello, Val? this is Val. How are you, Val? I'm doing all right. How are you guys? Pretty good. I just want to let you know I do I do my own podcast uh, Thursday mornings, which is tomorrow here in America, uh, and that would be uh, on my YouTube channel, YouTube.com/slash Tim Heidecker. You can see my name there. I think there's a link. And that's really a similar show, call-in show. We've got, you know, we. it's a little bit more, uh, no offense, it's, it's you were on the show. You I had a good time. Show. Yeah, I did have a good time. We uh, we have guests come in, we take calls, and it's, it's, it's a little lighter than this show. It's not, we don't get into some of the dark stuff. Sure. But uh, that's happening. And then uh, I'm going to be touring over there in the U.K., and Europe in March. What? Where? Where in the UK? Uh, yeah. Everywhere: London, Sheffield, Brighton, uh, Nottingham, uh, Galway, Ireland, and uh, Dublin, and uh, everywhere. If you now, can if, find that at timheidecker dot com slash live. Yeah. So uh, was this Val? Val. Can you make it out Hello. to any of those shows in the UK? I I live uh, in the US, but I would love to travel to the UK to come see you. All right. Well, we can arrange something. Are you doing any tour dates yeah, uh, domestically this year? Uh, no tour dates domestically uh, uh, can be announced at this moment. Okay. Got it. Got it. But I'm hoping to uh, later in the year, yes. Yeah, you selling any merch these days? Uh, Where can of, they buy merch? Well, the merch department is open, and that's at the website as well. Okay. 
Is it timheidecker.com slash shop? There'll be a, yeah, I believe so. Okay. So Val, if you want to get a, a first class plane ticket on British Airways to London, uh, you're going to want to land around March 14th to get settled in and then see me later in the month. Hi, <laughs> Dan. I can make it happen. Thank you. Do you have any other questions about any of Tim's upcoming projects or current <laughs> things that he has going on? She's got her own questions. I don't, but I will for sure tune into his show tomorrow morning. You should. You should. I did do Office Hours. It's fun. I'm glad that um, I was when I was on... Um, one thing that was, t- as you guys were talking about a band that I didn't know what the band was, mm-hmm. um, but then you started talking about uh, Eyes Wide Shut, mm-hmm. and I was like, I I can participate in this conversation because oh, yeah. I've seen Eyes Wide and Shut. Somebody told recently. me that I got the timeline of that movie wrong. Oh, that oh there well, was an actual extra day. We, we I did a whole thing about how that whole movie takes place over two days. I was thinking that too, but you were in this bit really of the, like it was just one day, and yeah. it was it was funny. So you what, know. What, was I an influence on you at all in your life? Yeah, I have it heavily. Okay, I was gonna. I was. Uh, I was thinking. I was like, I'm playing it cool, but I'm just gonna yeah. gush over you at the. Yeah. No. Okay. Um, so for, see, was, folks. I saw you. Um, I saw you at the Lincoln Theater in Washington D.C. Okay. With my best friend Ryan when I was fourteen Holy years crap. old. That's Tim. wild. I saw you on the the uh, Tim and Eric and Brule. Yeah, tour that was a great tour. With, with we Mr. Uh, Doug got Pound a great opening. piano backstage. I enjoy the piano backstage yeah. at the Lincoln Theater. Uh, that's terrific, man. Saw, fourteen uh, years old. Then I saw you when you were doing. Um, you were showing like the new episode of Bedtime Stories. I've oh. seen you three times. Okay, yeah. Great shows. Great show. I great put shows. on a great show. You do. You uh, put in, on a great show. The, I haven't seen you. In. I've seen your the special. Yeah. But I haven't seen. I haven't, I haven't gotten the chance to see the just band. you live doing the band. And right. Everything. The band is fantastic. They're unbelievable musicians, and uh, I love playing with them so much. I'm having so much fun, so much joy playing music with this group, and uh, play all my songs. There's some funny ones in there. Mm-hmm. There's some sad ones in there. I get people to cry. Mm-hmm. Into, uh, and uh, but man, it's What's the greatest the album joy. where you have a teardrop going. Uh, which... What the broken hearted do? I love that album. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. I like writing sad songs. They're they're very cathartic, and mm-hmm. uh, and they're the kind of songs I would want to listen to. You mm-hmm. know, I appreciate the range. I don't want to. Ri- I don't want to. S- I don't want to sit there and listen to that. Celebrate good, good times. Come, come on. on. What about the bad times? Huh? Who's yeah. singing about those? Come on, give me something to drink my beer with. You know, crying my beer. Anyway, Val. Yes. I think that show you did Beef Hello. House too. That was good. Beef House was great. Canceled. You want to hear something? Kind of is um, what I so before I did this, I worked in the social media department at Adult Swim. Oh wow. And that one of my jobs was to watch every episode of Beef House and <laughs> make job. and make gifts of it. Oh, you! Oh, those are those are everywhere now. Those are everywhere now. And I I saw you made a tweet that had a gif in it that I made, and I was like, hell yeah, Tim! Well, used thanks one for of the good gifts. work. Thanks for the great work. But that show apparently is so useless to them that you it does not exist anywhere on the internet. They got. I think it they got it got a bunch of shows cut in. Um, Fuck the merger, the big, the big HBO Max. Yeah, we don't want to talk biz. Things. Things. We, don't we don't want to have talk to talk shop. biz. These people out there don't want to talk, hear about our showbiz stuff. Sure, sure. I don't want to, you know, bring any of that up. But it's it's terrible to to for that show is is just I don't know where you you would you would even see it. My favorite thing of yours, uh, bedtime stories. For Very sure. proud of that show. Yeah. Uh, yeah that that. That's it gets pretty dark. We very we're very proud to make because we had made the awesome show and it's it obviously intentionally looks terrible. It looks like cable access. Right, and then and, this was the complete. Flip. And this was like let's do let's do something that looks great cinematically, mm-hmm. and uh, it was very hard to do that on a small budget. But we got you know there's the episode toes. Yeah, with Bob Odenkirk dark. and uh, what's his name. Uh, uh, M. Emmett, M. Emmett uh, Walsh. I show every my like anytime I'm like introducing someone to your universe, I show them Hole. Holes. That, that that's that came out really good too. Yeah. Thank you. 
Well, Val, is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Um, well, can I tell a joke? Yeah, of course. Um, do you guys know where they sell the Baconator? Where? Well, I'm asking. Uh, Wendy's. Fuck you, I know what you're gonna do. (laughs) Wendy's nuts going in your mouth. You guys didn't let me talk! It says here that you... Okay, actually, this is kind of fascinating. that's a good joke. It says here... (laughs) It says here that you were reported to an organization known as the USPF, which is an organization that governs horses, Mm. and you still have to work closely with the person who reported you. Yes. Why were you reported by the horse people? So, What'd you do to those horses, Val? I didn't do anything to the horses. It's that the horse sport is a very um, rich sport um like anyone that's good is a billionaire basically um and so i can't afford it unless i work for someone but now that i'm over 18 working for someone in exchange like working for free in exchange for not being billed for training is against the rules technically i have to be a professional Mm. so i was reported but that's not where my main issue lies. My main issue lies with the girl that reported me. I work very closely with, like, we go to horse shows and we live together for, like, one to two to three weeks at a time in a random city in the U.S. And I'm pretty positive she's on the autism spectrum. And I've always been the nice one to her. But now she's wronged me. And I just, I don't know how to proceed with her. Mm. Do you have any thoughts? Not on this one, no. Okay. Well, I I have a little thing, but it feels too. It feels moralist, but I could say it. Um, <laughs> you're like, all right. So you're the only one that was nice to this girl, and now she has reported you, and you are kind of over here, like, hey, I was the only one. I like stuck up for you, and everyone was making fun of you, and now you're throwing me into the bus like that. Um, mm-hmm. Is that that's how you're feeling? Well, because now I have to pay back all the prize money I've won, which is a couple thousand dollars. Oh, okay. There's a financial thing here. Yeah. I feel like tonight I've been extremely magnanimous. With my whatever insights I have. That's a what a word. Whatever help I can offer, I've been pretty, I think, doing the best I can. You have, yeah. It's been it's been choppy waters. No, you've been doing it. There's great. been people with real problems. Mm-hmm. There's been, there's been, inc- I think I hit my wall mm. with her. Just, I don't know why. I don't think your problem's less, in- less significant than somebody else's problem. Mm-hmm. I just I started to kind of zone out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, on that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and I just don't know what I could possibly say because I don't know enough. I I can't yeah. muster up the concern. This happens, and I apologize, Val. Yeah, that's okay. This happens to me, and she was going to come to my show in London. She's still going to come. <laughs> She's still going to come. <laughs> uh, well, actually, I don't know. She now she has. Now she's in debt because she probably it's already true. spent the prize money. This happens to me every stream. I usually actually, the way I do my stream is I go until I notice that I'm not paying attention to people yeah. anymore. I hit that yeah. moment with yeah. her. This is, I think this is a thing that horses, happens. Horses, yeah. I get, I'm like, I don't know, horses. It seems like, oh, why would you get involved in horses at all? No offense. No, I agree. Now she's definitely they not going to come to the show. Now they cause me back pain. Yeah. Let them free. Let them turn into wild horses and be get on with yourself. Um. <laughs> yeah, maybe uh, this this is an opportunity for you to explore new hobbies. Thank you, Lyle. Val, is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? I love you guys. We love you too, man. Peace. See you in London. Deuces. Yeah. See ya. How are you feeling, Tim Heidecker? I'm good. I yeah. might have to go soon. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, what time is it? 
It's eight. It's two hours. We, we, uh, yeah, we did it. We did nice. good. I mean, I yeah. I genuinely love this. I could do good, it. Good man. I'm glad. Th- th- by the way, thank I you. I hope I'm not. I hope the audience does. Uh, I, I I have no idea. People oh, could be fuck mad. The audience. This is, this is for me because they truly love you. Yeah. Well, now that you said that, it makes me feel like you know they don't like it. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> They're stoked about this. But, well, for I was well. No, I said that because you know. Um, no, I well, was. People gonna... love you, and they want you. And I, feel, I hope I haven't been hogging the air. Fuck it, no, hell no. Take another call. Okay, and then I'll get out of here. Okay, so this, they'll do one more. My poor children. Tell are me if bed anything. Me tucking them in. Tell me if anything. I can't really read that. My she eyes adds. are. That's the other thing, Lyle. Is my yeah. get old. My eyes are going. Yeah, I had perfect vision my whole life. Really. And as people have said, when you hit forty, you start to need. Glasses and it's happening to me. I can't. Uh, gla- are we going to do con- contacts? No, just, we... just like reading. I get these like readers at at Target. You know, they're just cheapies that I can that for reading and for like typing on the computer. Do you know who Mr. Beast is? I heard about this. He just, yeah. he just cured a thousand blind people. Yeah. Did he really though? Well, he paid someone else to do it. He sure. didn't like do it. Sure. Yeah. Good for him. I don't know. Is it a controversy? What? I mean, I think people are like, why do you need to pay a billion dollars to get to not be blind? Sure. But yeah, I, I get that. That that's the that's kind of the leftist uh, of which I am one perspective is when you when you do these charitable things, it it's a it becomes a smokescreen for the larger injustices happening in society, and. It, it, these feel good stories of uh, there's always these feel good stories that when you look into the under the under the hood a little bit you're like well this is actually just reminding us how dystopian and horrible yeah we've created what a horrible society we've created like those things where you've contests to win like so there's one in England where it was a contest and the prize was that they were going to pay your gas bills or something for the month yeah. and it's sort of like it becomes a little dystopian eh. okay anyways I got this. This one's a, a career-y thing. This is some career advice. Okay. He's not from New Jersey, is he? He's from New Jersey. Do you have a thing uh, against people in New Jersey? Should we take uh, another one? No, let's talk to him. I All just, right. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm at my wits' end with these Jersey kids. I can't do Jersey. What is it? Who is it? Hello, hello, Billy. Hi. What's going on? How's it going? What are you in Jersey now? I'm in Jersey, whatever the fuck that is. Yeah, I'm in Jersey. What's what part? North, south, central? Uh, the beach-ish kind of area, like uh, you know where, like Point Pleasant is. Wild Wildwood. Around there, sure. Okay, you don't want to talk about where you live. I get it. I'm familiar I, with Wild, I mean, like, Wildwood, I mean, like, Jersey. Whatever. Yeah. It's where all the Temple University okay, kids go. would go on their summer vacations. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is How funny because I actually went to. Anyway, yeah, uh, having some career uh, questions right now. I feel bad though because Tim, if you're like tired, you know, and it's kind of like heavy topic. I can keep it light. Something else. I don't know. No, no. Let me. <laughs> let's end on a heavy note with me, please. Uh, oh, as dark sure, as you sure. could possibly get. All right. So anyway, uh, graduated from school in 2021 and then uh, got a job, got fired from that job, went to a therapy program to kind of like figure out what's going on with my head. And during that time, I wrote a uh, sort like a graphic novel. I wrote a uh, like you could say it's like a, like a storyboard, but it's like a full length uh book sort of uh I, I i don't know the proper language to describe it but it's like i, I wrote an actual novel right whatever comic book but it's like 200 mm-hmm. plus pages or whatever uh and i'm now in 2023 trying to get myself uh back into my actual um technical career which is electrical work so mm. yeah yeah i'm trying to Get back into that. Is your, is and, your brain uh, stuck? shut off? Well, what's the what, what? How can we help? Um, I don't know. Uh, just looking for some advice for somebody who's also like trying to uh, contact agents. And I, you know, what? 
to be honest with you, I don't really think I'm going to get much help from you guys, even though, um, you know, you're involved with the industry <laughs> as far as that goes. Because what do you? All right. Well, you're, a prag, you're a pragmatic guy. You're a realist. Well, uh, are yeah. you proud of what you what you wrote? Oh, fuck yeah. I, I mean, I wrote you it from the heart. You think it's great? Uh, it means a lot. But what? You think you think it's great? I I like it. I mean, I don't know if it's great. Uh, I think. What's the genre of it? Uh, what is it? It's it's literary fiction. Um, and uh, it's like I, I actually I I can't even think of the genre because it's hard to place it. And that's like one of the first things that they say you have cool. to do is figure okay. out what genre your uh, your book is. But it's well, about don't... a guy who's dealing. No, go ahead. Guy so give us the elevator pitch. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's about a guy who's dealing with uh, depression, and it takes place about a year after he graduates from school, trying to get his book published. He can't get it published, mm -hmm. and he falls into a depression. And it's about like the five months after that year that he kind of goes into dealing with figuring out how to solve, not really solve, but just kind of maintain himself as he's going through life, dealing with his feelings of maybe like inadequacy or uh, uh, just uh, insecurity about his writing. Like he's afraid to start writing again because he's not sure whether or not whether it'll actually go anywhere. Sounds great. I mean, it does. It sounds compelling, and from from your own personal story, clearly, mm -hmm. uh, it's from the heart. Um, I feel like w w nowadays the push to uh, get like a traditional, like whether it's a fucking TV show or a book or whatever, the days of Mother May I make this and put it out into the universe are kind of gone you know there's the there's there's so many different ways to promote and publish the thing that you, especially if it's like a something you can lack you don't even need i don't know if you need money necessarily to like maybe to make physical copies but you know to, to produce the the work on digital or whatever it is yeah yeah, yeah i don't I know mean, that I world of illustrator. graphic novels I'm sorry to interrupt. I was just going to say, I don't know no. the world of graphic novels at all, so I wouldn't even know where to point you. Uh, but my sister actually writes um, young adult novels. Oh, cool. And she's oh, been doing it for cool. many years. But she started just by doing it and and self-publishing. You can publish on Amazon. you know. And she just kept mm -hmm. doing it and kept doing it and finally started making made contacts uh, and, and connected with other people. And now she's like really doing it. And she does like... She writes these like romance novels that go up on Amazon, the ebooks, Kindle, and she makes it's her full time job and she pumps them out. So it sounds like you have something in you that wants to get out and I would keep doing it and keep exploring, read all the forums and all this how to publish a sell a graphic novel. Like you're right, the information is out there. It's it's very much more doable now than ever before to to publish your on your own to to independently distribute or you know find the right people to send it to i think you just need to start digging into that that's what i did that's yeah, what I've eric been and i did sending it out i've been sending it out to uh different literary agents just to like see what they think uh, as far as like representing me and mm -hmm. i think the one thing that pulled me back from self-publishing is the fact that i'm not an illustrator myself so i can't actually draw these pages that i need to get i like, see yeah you need to partner with somebody yes you, you could hook up with someone who does exactly that. yeah i mean you exactly. started you you so sent I, like uh fucking like tapes around to people and yeah. shit right yeah but we're not we're talking about him mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah can you find somebody that can draw I mean, I found an illustrator off of uh, what's uh, Upwork dot com. Like they they do okay. they offer uh, a, uh, a they facilitate uh, an interface between you and like other uh, artists or graphic designers or anything that you really need to get done that has to be uh, done professionally. You can get you can find somebody that can help you out on that website. And I found somebody, but the problem is that it's her work is pretty costly so i started a kickstarter mm. which ended on january 27th i got like a dollar for it so that was kind of oh. like a, a you know like a no-go almost but I, I'm, I'm thinking about like starting it up again like after i do some more research as far as um 
like trying to get a base and foundation as far as like a following of people that are interested and then you know getting more word out about it and having people like the the call screener she was telling me um that i could uh i like she was trying to give me a tip as far as uh what i could do and i can't really remember it now because um well a, a, well, 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 Billy, Billy, I think I think you're on the right track with this stuff, man. It seems like you're you're, um, you know. Yeah, I bet if you kept pushing at this, you could find somebody that you don't have to pay. You could just co- say, "Hey, you want to be a, cl- a partner on this?" Yeah. You know, there's a lot sure. of talented uh, uh, artists out there, and it it doesn't cost like drawing is, aside from pen and paper, you know, mm-hmm. does, there's no cost involved, so. There might be a young college kid, somebody coming out of uh, like trying to build their their uh, portfolio. Yeah, that would say, "Hey, well, I'll do the first ten pages of this thing, and uh, that's enough to show." You know, they, they don't have to do the whole book; they could just do the first ten pages, mm-hmm. and then you could send that to the agents, and so they get up because these agents and these public they, most people in this business have terrible imaginations. They want everything laid out in front of them as exactly as it's going to be. When in reality, kind of like in the old days, other. you'd say, I got an idea. I'm going to be a boxer and I'm going to be a loser, but then I win. And they go, all right, go ahead and make that movie. It comes yeah. back with Rocky, right? Nowadays, you try to pitch that. You'd have to have the poster done. You'd have to have the script done, you know, before anybody would touch it. So people are very lacking in imagination these days in those positions. So you do have to present them with a clear of an idea as possible. Uh, and uh, yeah, I bet there's some kid out there who would do it for nothing or for, or for a subway sandwich. Billy, is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer uh, before we go? No, no, you guys have been great. Uh, Lyle, I'm hoping to go to your New York show on the 19th and, uh, you know, Tim, I I love your work. Uh, I'm not like too familiar with everything that you've done. As far as uh, your, your, you could have just said you love my work. Uh, <laughs> you didn't have to. No, it's cool. <laughs> no, I, I'm actually like it. I'm I'm super because my girlfriend is like super into your work and she she watches Office. But I don't think she watches See, Office. Hours, always, she, it's always the boyfriend yeah, now. She just like checks out your stuff. So, all right, cool. But anyway, well, uh, my best. Thank you. Thanks for both. calling, Billy. Yeah, thank you both. Of course. Have a good night. <laughs> I love that. Thanks. Good night. I would imagine like a situation like somebody meets Robert. De- not to compare myself to Robert De Niro. No, please, Mister De Niro. I love your movies. I haven't seen all of them, <laughs> but you understand, right? Yeah, I mean, you can love if someone's movie. You, yeah. you see one I movie, seen, and you but like he, it. no one would say that to Robert right. De Niro. They would be like, Mister De Niro, I love your movies. Mm-hmm. They wouldn't add like, I'm not familiar with. Well, I listen, seen Tim, <laughs> Tim, to me, you're a hero. I've seen it all. I fucking love no, you. I, I love really you appreciate you. Cut. This is, this has been a great. Uh, you know, fun full circle moment for me because I've told oh. you I've been a you know a huge fan since I was a fucking kid, and so I, I appreciate really appreciate it. you coming. No, I love what you're doing, doing here, and uh, it's fun to talk. It's fun to get, I love. I got the gift. I got you got the gift to gift, gift, the gift to get. No, but I it is fun. It's easy and fun. And if you ever want me to come back, I, I will not be a uh, I will not be offended if you don't want me back. Yeah, fine, but fine, if, I'll love, if you come uh, back whenever you want, okay. Well, I I know you got a great audience out there. This is your baby, and congratulations. Thanks, Tim. And the, the people they, they they love you. And congratulations. Let's hear it for, let's hear it for you. People at home are clapping. I believe Beautiful. that. Tim, uh, um, I'm gonna go um, pee and yeah. leave. Is and you're there, gonna keep talking? Is the well? Is there any you uh, you want to do your plugs again or anything else you want to say to the people? Or? No, oh, well, just yes. I mean. I'm I'm touring. If do you have a European audience? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we have we have some people in in Europe and in, in the UK. UK I'm Please going... go see this man in the UK. If you haven't, by the way, go check out an evening with Tim Heidecker on YouTube for yes. a little bit of a taste of what you'd be getting. It's going all to the there. Show. Uh, on Cinema is the other show I do that is uh, we're all self funded. We didn't really talk about this, but uh, not self funded. It's subscriber funded. The high it's network. The high network. Yeah, it's high, if, you, if you've seen on Cinema, most people, a lot of people have. But it's this thing that get, it's so big and so um, it's like the Marvel universe. You know, yes. there's so many components to it. But you've seen things because everything gets clipped out and posted. The the trial we did, the we did Decker a five-hour and the trial, trial and on Decker. cinema. But it all lives now on the High Network. It's HighNetwork.tv and it's five bucks a month. And we that's how we fund the. Sh- it's a, you know, it's how we fund making the shows now. It's going very well, but we can always use mm-hmm. more. 
And then, yeah, I'm heading to the UK in March to do uh, my two Tim show, which is stand up and then my band. And that's going to be uh, over at timheidecker.com slash live. London's already sold out. Oh, shit. And uh, I think Galway sold out. A few places have sold out, but there are tickets available in other parts of the beautiful island, the British Isles. And uh, that's it. I'm going to head back to Glendale. Folks, give this man your support. I will go on a whim. I will say this. I don't know if there would be a therapy gecko without a Tim Heidecker. This man is an inspiration to me. He's an inspiration to all the folks out here doing fun weird stuff on the computer so please go check out the high network go subscribe go see this man live h-e-i h-e-i go he everything he's ever lots of things you've done on hbo max go check it all out why did i I take this out this this is a i broke the the you're fine you're fine tim heidecker all right bye everybody it was was a lot of fun It's not